question. Yo. You ain't wanna motherfucker high stepping. Yo. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey. Motherfucker never learned your lesson. Yeah. 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 I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. Woo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, they woke up, drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker. Change like a hoe, nigga. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Man, listen, Drew Titan Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Uh, I see a lot of people in the uh, in the chat. Salute to all of you. We're gonna get started immediately. Stormy B man's in the building. I see your background, no doubt. Um, we just gonna go ahead and get right into it, man. Y'all already know the big dog, my big brother Freddie Pendleton, is in the building and. We got the almighty, underrated trainer, in my opinion, Brooklyn's <laughs> own, Yoel Judas in the building. Salute, Yoel. How you doing, man? God bless. Excellent, God excellent. Freddie, how you doing, brother? I'm good, I'm good. Excellent, excellent. Stormy B in the building. How you doing, Sensei? Doing pretty good. Salute to everybody. Salute, 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 man. That's why I see the chat. Man, man, Mar said Freddie's back. Exactly, man. Freddie, let everyone know what's what's been going on with you, bro. So so everyone can be. Oh uh, yeah, man, my my dumb behind went out running on on one of the really hottest days, you know, during the summer. And um, I mean, I felt great. I ran for about an hour and a half in the burning hot sun. Came back home, passed out with sleep. Woke up. <clears throat> I was walking that morning. and I just fell. Mm. I didn't even know what happened. They said I had a stroke. So, mm. Wow. Yeah, you know, now I gotta be careful. Yeah. I just work too hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you always did, Freddie. Always. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, man. But we're glad to have you here. We're glad to have you back, brother. You know, my door is always open for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um yes, sir. and this is what it's all about, man. We love the sport that doesn't love mm -hmm. us one hundred percent. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's what we we discuss things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. What we like to, what we like to see, what we like to have seen in the past, what could have been. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, uh, what we're gonna do? The man of the hour is Joel Judah. Man, how you doing, big bro? I'm doing great. I'm doing good. Very really good. Excellent, man. man. We, I got, I got so many things to ask you, man. In so little time, man. Um, first of all, uh, let the audience know what you've been up to. Uh, I've been, I, you know, I've been in the gym. I got, I got a construction company. Oh, so I got, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I've been doing it all my life. So I got like, right, right now, I got about eight and nine buildings in New York. Oh. That I, 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 you know, I go to them every day, make sure the supplies <coughs> is there, the men is there. I mean, I'm kind of like an overseer. Where I, I hit like, I hit like eight, nine jobs a day. After I get through with that, I go to the gym. I got mm. about 14, 15 fighters in the gym that I train. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I'm supposed to go out with I'm supposed to get ready to go out with Devin with Devin for the fight come both of them. But we're trying to work out some things. And you know, but I think maybe between now and uh Tuesday we might have we might have him worked out. You heading to Australia? I might be going out there, yeah. They call me. Devin Devin said that he don't want to fight really without me. He would like to end his career with me. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you know, you know just look, man, just you being again, you being around you being around look, I watched Freddie Pendleton. Freddie, you know Georgie Ben? <laughs> yeah, everybody likes my little Georgie, especially if you were Philly. Well, that was my trainer. Now he was doing was my trainer. Uh, mm -hmm. little, little Griffin, that he trained me. All these guys I have. Oh, yeah, the best guys, you know. Yeah, so when you learn, when you, go, when you, when you train by masters, you learn how to master the game. That's so, it. So, so yeah. Devin, I said, what's up? Oh, tell who? Devin. Oh, Devin, yeah, okay, I will. I definitely will, yeah. All yeah, right. we, we, we. <clears throat> We are uh, we we hold Devin down over here, man. Right. We hold Devin down. Bill, Bill's been on my show. He's on all of our platforms, man. Solid brother, man. And um, you and got guys like you, guys like Bill, guys like Jack Mosley. I don't think the black fathers get enough credit for what y'all do. Cause you know they, they have a preconceived notion about black fathers, but that's another show. You know what I mean? But you guys, yeah. I, I I knew who you guys were off the back, man. And I salute y'all guys, man, for real, for real, man. Um, I didn't know, um, uh, like when they when when Cambozo, because that's what we call him over here. We call him George Cambozo. Mm -hmm. uh, Cambozo tried to pull that fast one and not let the entire goddamn camp into Australia at the last possible moment. 
I mean, we were over here flipping tables, man. I mean, let me ask you something, Yoel. Um, shouldn't that? I mean, I don't know if I don't know everything, but the camps being allowed into a country shouldn't that some shouldn't that have been something that should have been discussed the moment the contract was signed to fight and for Devin to go over to Australia? Shouldn't that have been something y'all should have known at the top of the hour instead of a, a, a month before, like a couple of weeks before the fight, a week before the fight? I really don't know if Bill and uh, the Australian government, how they talk, or, or Bob Iron talk to Bill, or Lou DiBella, I don't know. Uh, but it seemed like at the last minute, the day before the fight, they let Bill come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, all of, you know, for, for the whole four weeks, five weeks, I had Devin, I was training for the whole fight, getting ready. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, me and, uh, me and Ronnie, and, uh, you know, we, we got Devin sharp. We got him sharp. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Oh, why they wait to the last minute to bring Bill over here? Cause I don't know, I don't know. That was something. But I think this time here, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fight for Devin. Ain't gonna be no walk, no cakewalk. Not to me. Boy, the boy gonna fight. Composer is gonna fight his heart out. Cause you know, you can't lose twice in a country. They they gonna mm -hmm. they gonna they gonna shout. They gonna look at you. They gonna like yo, don't 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 even say to me. So Devin's up for <laughs> challenge. This, this this is gonna be a rough fight for Devin. But Devin is a great, is a hell of a fighter. He pulls off great wins. And he can box, he's smart, he can move, he can dance. You know what I mean? He got he got Devin got all the tools. I know, think so. Devin's Devin's gonna knock him out late because Cambozo's good. <laughs> Cambozo's gonna do something out of character because I think in the first fight, that was the best Cambozo we can get. He pulled every rabbit out of the hat as far as um his uh promoting the fight, you know, talking all this ridiculous shit that he was talking. And right. and um he was acting out of character. And calling him a, a a rat and all this other stuff, right? Um, right. And uh, it, it was it was just ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. And um, Devin, I was so proud of how his he had such a professional posture. And um, you you'll never know how proud I was to see him sitting there next to his father, his father. He wasn't screaming. He wasn't yelling. He wasn't acting how they portrayed most black men to be young men. You understand? And right. that 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 hit me like, wow, look at this young brother. Look at this young king. Look at look at Bill. Look at them. Look at them. The only the only ignorant person in that whole buildup was George Cambosis with fraudulent information, too. And Devin boxed his damn face in. He boxed his face in. There was one point, I forget which round, it was around five or six, where he literally held Devin by the arm and tried to hit him, and it still missed. Yeah. It was hilarious. I said, man, he couldn't throw a rock into an ocean, man. He was punching fresh air. And I think cool. I think this time, um, when plan A through X fails, he's going to try and go balls to the wall and run into something. And I think Devin's going to stop him, like, around 11, 12. Okay, man. I, could, I mean, it's way possible. Possibly that can happen, you know. So we just gotta, you know, see. But he Devin's in, in, in really, really good shape. His mind is focused. He Devin's thinking about Devin, Devin's confident. He know he's gonna beat him. He know it. So he just training the same, but we ain't changing too much. You know, we're doing a few things and then and you know, then October 15th be yeah, here in, no, in no time, another week or two. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a compacted week for us, man, because a lot of the brothers and sisters are going to be in Brooklyn. There's about there's going to be about fifty of us in Brooklyn, but the, Devin's fighting early in the day over here, so we're, right. we're going to run and try and find somewhere to watch it, and then scoot over to the Barclays. You know what I mean? Because right. we, we got a lot of work to do, man. Uh, Stormy <laughs> Sensei's in the building. Yes, sir. How you doing, big bro? Man, I'm doing fine, and I'm glad you got these two brothers on here. Tonight, salute to Yoel. This is my first time being able to speak to him. I really uh, got a lot of respect for what he was able to do out here in the sport, and he's still working with Devin. That's a wonderful thing. It's The irony is this. You guys speaking about Devin, his dad, Yoel's participation, and Yoel having his son and Zap. The, the, the thing about fathers, I spoke on that on my show earlier this morning. And I offered an interesting perspective that 
you know, the PTB, and for you all that don't know that we refer to the PTB as an acronym for the powers that be. You know, when I had a caller call in and ask me, and we had a dis small discussion on the, you, you know, the thing where, where Devin, you know, being held up and they trying to keep the belts away from him and everything. Why did nobody want to fight him and this and that? But I offered up an interesting perspective and I would like to share a little bit of it with you guys if you if, if Drew would permit. Because I think that this is something that you two gentlemen, uh, Freddie and Yoel, you, you, you could appreciate. Um, and, you know, I, I'll just pull this up real quick, uh, Drew, and you can you can let it you can let it fly. When I get it up here, this was just this morning. So. Uh, if you, uh, Drew, can you hit play on that or do I have to hit play? Uh, you got to hit play. I, I got to hit play. Did it come up already? Yeah. It's there. Okay. It. All right. Check this out, fellas. Devin and his dad arrived in Australia this past week. They ready. They ready to take care of business. They ready to take care of business. Yeah, but understand, like I said, representing from a different type of circumstance, one that you're not familiar with because that's not how it's been advertised. It's not how it's been promoted. But that's why when you buy a bushel of apples or a bag of grapes or whatever, you pick out the bad ones and you discard them. And the ones that's ripe and ready for you to devour, that's what you do. But you don't have to accept what these promoters and managers and mismanagers of the sport and some of the lame lapdog lackey fighters who don't know any better too. Because they're the ones that are help fool you. Because they'll come out and say stupid stuff. Like Tank Davis. Tank is still over there under the umbrella of TMT and Leonard Ellaby and all those guys. But what he doesn't realize, and Coach Ford, his coach, what he is in a position to be like Devin, independent, and be still the biggest man in the sport or whatever. But they still love it over there under Floyd. Why? Because they don't know any better, because there's something lacking. And that that is lacking, the lack of knowledge, will keep him in prison and bound by certain circumstances when he should be allowed to be liberated and fly on to the heights that he can ascend to or crash to the ground for lack of being able to go further than where he is. But the one thing that's important is to be able to take the journey and you never know what you could do if you don't take the journey, brother. See? There it is. Um, thought I would just share that with you guys, man. And what 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 was uh, missing? I also earlier has stated that, you know, Devin having his dad be a part of what he's doing, but from a positive perspective. You know, um, they don't want that. They don't want that to be promoted because that gives people hope. It gives people inspiration. It gives people the gumption and initiative to say, wow, if they can do it, we can do it. I can do it. That's not what they want. Now, right. they will sell this whole thing about you came up hard. You, you came from a broken home and you, you always just wanted something better for your mom and all of that. But understand the emasculation of the black man and his presence in doing something positive. They never want to promote that. Never. Notice, they'll talk about Earl Spence being a good fighter, but they don't talk about him coming from a good family. They don't do that because that's not what 
the whole objective is. That's why a lot of times I speak that this is deeper than boxing. Yep. Because it, it, it crosses over the parallels of boxing and real life. Walk that same path. And a man that's elevated, that's walking with fortitude. He's walking, having been taught. He's walking in, in a, a certain type of light and representation because his dad being present is significant. Why is it okay with every other nationality on this planet, but it's not okay for us? That's right. So, again, understanding when people say, well, why do you feel people don't want to fight Devin and this and that? It's not a... It, Devin's skill set are what, what it's going to be. Boxing is boxing. But he's got something special going on there with his dad. That's right. And his dad got him behaving a certain kind of way because of this is how he was taught and yep. raised. And that's a yep. positive thing. But see, they don't want that. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. And they've tried to hold that off as long as they could. Look at how they tried to not even allow his dad to be a part of the first fight. That enraged me. That whole thing is a systematic situation that they try to bring about, you know, the destruction. And foolish people get out here and they say negative stuff about Devin and things like that. They don't understand it because they've been brainwashed. They've been brought up in this system and not even understand the value. For someone who understands the value of a father. Yes, you got brothers out here. Dads weren't a part of their life or whatever. For whatever reason, everyone has a story. But overall, understand that as a man, even if you go on to have your own family, how significant you will be being a part of your seed and putting them on track for survival. Holy shoot. Y'all saw that? Stormy, come back in. What the hell? What happened? I don't know. Stream StreamYard just booted him. Stormy, come back in. See? You see? You see? You see that? You see that? You see that? Oh, shoot. You cannot tell me. I've been telling you. They've been tracking me, brother, but I ain't stopping. Sign up for my Patreon and you'll see the real deal. But what the now you know, now you know, live, right here, right here. For those of you that don't know, and I'll get to the Super Chats at the end, man, I'm sorry. For those of you that don't know, anytime <laughs> you know we don't hate anybody, but we're pro-black and we're proud of who we are. And we're proud of what we do. And we stand on it. We don't hate anyone. But we're proud. We're black, we're proud. In the middle of Stormy speaking positive about black family and the importance of black fathers, they removed him from my fucking stream temporarily. That never happened. What they do. In all these shows we've been doing, that's never happened. That's that. Oh shit! This is what we. This is what we go through, y'all. I didn't do that shit. Of course you didn't. You put what me on a single screen so it could just be me there, and they took me off. Unbelievable. Well, you know what? We gonna keep kicking it. You're well, my brother. <laughs> That's up. Yeah. Um. If they mad at Stormy, they about to be hella mad now. Um. <laughs> so we we we're, we're talking. Right now, what we're talking about is uh, 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 remaining focused and um, the importance of mentorship. For instance, a lot of people don't know. Zab is not the only fighter that you have. Zab's no. brother fight. Um, your son, when he was about, you remember, uh, man, this, this was a few years ago. He was about to fight Prince Badi Ajamu in Atlantic City. Right, Danielle. Yeah. Right, and, and he missed weight. Badu, uh, uh, the prince missed weight. Yeah. I was out there for that. Okay. I was out there for that. And um, I think he was going to whoop a Jamal's ass, me personally. He was going to whoop his ass. But I drove out to Atlantic City. I still had a good time. You know what I mean? 
Um, uh, what I what I want to know. Well, let me take it a step back because I see people in the chat asking. Tell us about your martial arts career. Oh uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, you know, martial arts. I started when I was nine years old. Yeah, and I went. I was first instructor. I went to Master Ed Pugh, and uh, to be with the instructor, he had like a hundred. He had like three seventy five black belts. And, and I got in there. I, I so I started at nine. At seventeen, I mean, I was winning everything: tournaments, kata, kamite, all that. But at seventeen, I, they gave me my they gave me my black belt. My first degree black belt. I said, and I, I me, mean, I personally got tired of just kicking the air, hitting the air, reverse punches, you know, hook kicks, all that. But that I mastered all that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make contact, so I went to full contact karate. He came, and uh, I went to the top guys they had, beat them one, 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 one. I won a world title. From them, I, uh, yeah, I came back with challenge of video, and I lost that fight on the decision. Mm -hmm. Then I came back and I, and I fought Clarence, Clarence, Clarence Jackson. I fought him for the title. I beat I, I, and I beat uh another one, uh, uh a Spanish kid. I can't even say his name right now. Anyway, I won three titles. And then, then listen to that. I went to the garden and I, I took my first pro boxing fight because I was with Mark, I was with Mark Whelan and Lou Duva. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was really working with Mark, and, uh, but they thought I was so good with my hands that I could take a fight. So I was, I, I fought the first time in the garden, and I won. You know, and I ran up, I ran, I ran up two or three more fights behind that. And uh, but I did most of my fights. I left the, I left the ring with uh, fifty-seven and two, with thirty-nine knockouts. That's, that's what I, I retired. Yeah, that's what I was record, Yeah. So, um, what what degree black belt are you all again? Right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm well. You can say I'm a. I'm. I'm. You can say I'm like a ninth degree, ninth, tenth degree right now. God damn, you're a dangerous man. Yeah. yeah. Yo, how 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 fast? I heard something about you having a a a, a very fast spinning back fist. How fast was yeah. that? Spinning fist or spinning or back kick? Back kick. A, back kick. Yeah, I had a spinning back. I had a spinning jump kick that I could turn on you in a second, hit you in the face. Oh shit. I mean, I was, I was, <laughs> yeah. God damn! I got, I got like four knockouts with that kid. I knocked the guy. I had him around the chair, knocked him out. Um, they, you, you, you bet, you bet it with it. You bet it one leg, you jab, jab, then they come, and then you, just, they come, you just spin, but you gotta jump with it for the power. Damn! And when it hits him, it's like a, like oh man, like an older hit you. God. you know? and I, I knocked a couple guys out with body shots, kick to the ribs, kick to the face, you know. But the martial art was great. Was great. I mean, I did my, my martial art. Like I got my ninth, tenth degree. I got my three world titles again. Mm -hmm. and I got my fights in boxing. So I've been fighting all my life. That's all I've been doing. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so it's only natural. Mm, sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only natural uh, when when the rest of the boys came along, you just naturally put them in the gym. Have you ever heard of Sensei Moses Power? No. Moses Power, no. Mr. Right, Moses Power was a legend. I think uh, 300 pounds to do a, a finger roll on one on one finger. He's always in the, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the garden doing, you know, a, a sports world. But anyway, he was he was one of my instructors. Uh, Ed Pugh, uh, Ronald Duncan, George Cofield, Thomas Republic. I was with, all, I was with that cold crew right there. Mm -hmm. All masters, but Bill John Davis, they were all killers. So I mean, they didn't give us no break. He had no breaks. So, I mean, I, I really was one of them tough. Right? Because I went on a lot of days sore and hurting. But... It came out later on. It proved to me, you know, to win these these championships. That's how was I won them. Goodness, sheesh, man! If, if, if there was a UFC back then, oh yeah, you'd be kicking people's yeah. heads off back then. Good, <laughs> Ness, my yeah. gosh, man! So, um, when did you know that your boys were going to be that talented? Well, you know, the funny thing with that, the funny story because I, when, I, when I took them on, well, they were they were fighting in the streets. Mm -hmm. They'll make the story. They, fight, they always come to school. They fight these guys. They fight this guy. Right? So I was with, that was, was that, that was Ariel, Daniel, Josiah, and uh, Joseph. Mm -hmm. And they was always fighting. I'm like over there. So I said, you know what? When you guys come out of school. You'll meet me in the gym for that one. Wow. The gym is come on the bus, come straight out there, and they get over in the gym is right there. So, so when, they, when I got them, when they first went in the gym, they started. They, they we had three rings in Gleason, three rings, and we got a, a wrestling ring. You know where they went? They all went to the wrestling ring. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, I couldn't believe it. 
went to the wrestling ring and started doing Hulk Hogan and Superfly Snooker. And, uh, <laughs> I'm standing for Oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, I don't really want to. I really want, I don't want to. I don't do that. But I had to wait till they come around. Everybody else was boxing now. They on the, they in the wrestling ring all day just going crazy. You know, so that, that went on for about three weeks. Then, you know, one, one, one of the boys came in there, but he, then he went to the bag. He started hitting the bag, boom, 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 and him. And then I started with cut. He, said, he got it good. The other brother, the other brother wanted to show that he can do the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they all eventually came over to boxing. Yeah. Wow. Now, I followed, um, you know, Zab stuck out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's always, I, I'm from the Bronx. Okay. You know, um, so I'm already, I'm automatically biased. Any fighter that comes out of New York, you know, I follow him. I'm automatically biased. So Zab, I'm 46 years old. Me and Zab are around the same age. Yep, you are. Yeah, yeah. I think mean, Zab is 45. Right. So right. when I when I saw Zab come out, you know, I started seeing him. I think the first time, the very first time I saw Zab had to be, uh, it was on ESPN, I believe. It was on ESPN. Right. And uh, he knocked somebody out. He knocked the shit out of him. And um, and I looked, and it said Brooklyn, New York. I said, okay, there it is. And I remember he had the big old billboard when you come over the Brooklyn Bridge, running into down down Brooklyn. Yeah. Y'all had the billboard up there, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah, was a couple, we had a couple. Yeah, one, one, one in Brooklyn, we had one in Queens, and one in Manhattan. Yeah. Right, right, right. So I said, all right, man, this kid's doing big things, man. And um, I remember when he fought uh, Irish Mickey Ward. That was a right. tough fight. And uh, tough fight. when I double fight, we only had Mickey Ward. Yes, yeah. Yes, that was tough. Yeah. Yeah. That was tough. Mickey Ward just kept coming, man. That guy, I, got Zab, I, got him in, I got him in tremendous shape for that fight right there. You know what I'm saying? And he did his thing. You know, you know, like I tell people, when we fought Floyd Mayweather, mm-hmm. Floyd, I told everybody, I said, I, I have said it in front of Floyd. I said, Floyd, you know you, you know you lost that fight. He, look, he, just, he, just, <laughs> he just smiled. He ain't going to admit it. The reason why, because when Roger Mayweather and, and uh, Lennox Ellaby stepped on the apron, that was done. Qualification. Mm. But yo, mm. the reason why it wasn't done, because we found out later on that Richard Steele was a surrogate father to Floyd. Floyd to go, he did at his house, wife would cook for him. We found out, we found out later on. There's that name Steele. again, Richard mm. Steele. Richard Steele, there's that yeah. name. Yeah, Richard <laughs> Steele. That's why he didn't DQ, you know? And, uh, and they blew the knockdown. Zab hit him, his glove touched, man. And we, hit, and we had a knockdown, and Richard Steele didn't score it. That's right. Yeah, like, yo, he was, Richard Steele was, you know, his family was scored, family. Damn. You know, he might, he might, you know, I don't know. He might have got a little envelope or something. I don't know. But we, we, we try to get Floyd to do it again. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd would fight anybody, but he said, hell no. <laughs> he, he went crazy. He said, never, ever will I fight Zab again. But he knows. He said, second time, I promise you, we would have got him. He knows it, too. He knows yeah, it, man. Know. You know, Zab, um, um, he, I think when he first fought Corey Spinks, I think he... It's more or less Zab lost the fight. Corey didn't win it in the first fight. You, you get what I'm right. saying? Right. And in, in the rematch, Zab came in there all business, and he oh, stopped yeah. Corey. Yeah. And, and, right. and, and salute to Corey, but I, I, I knew that was going to happen. I knew Zab was going to beat him. And happened to Floyd. We got we, got, we, got, we got, Floyd gave us every from Floyd. Floyd no, we grew up together. Me, Zab, Floyd, Roger, and Lenny LB. We was always in the same camp. I, uh, Zab and Floyd and Zaya Raheem was in the Olympic together. It was a, they were. Isaiah Raheem and Floyd Mayweather was on Liberty Team. That was an awesome. But he went with all the went. And where they went, he went. You know what wow. I mean? You know, you know what I also Liberty. wanted to see? Yeah. I wanted y'all to run it back with Costa Zoo. Because, you know, look, yeah. man, I remember everything about that goddamn night. And, and that was Zab's coming out party. I yeah. was so hyped for that fight. And he won the first round so easy. Zab got this move where he catch you with the counter uppercut. Yeah, and usually it's lights out, but you know, Costa has a really durable chin, and I said, "Man, he gonna box his face in for twelve rounds if he don't drop him, right?" Yeah, and yeah. Zab just, you know, he made a mistake, and I yeah, think listen. I think he tried to get up off the floor too fast. Yeah, he just took an eight count, but yeah, think about it. Zab, Zab, well, Zab knew he was so confident. Everybody knew he was gonna beat Costa. Zou. Yeah, Zab got a little, he got a little bit too confident. But when he when he was fighting, he had his hands down by his knees. He shook it. He slipped and punches. I said, never. Why you, I said, why you drop? He came in the corner the first round. I jumped all over. Like, yo, don't try. Just take the time and box him. Wait, don't go for the kill. Dad was so anxious. Dad ran in there. Yo, they got his hands out. He went left. When he went right. Got the zoo. He just set him up. I, I seen the right hand. Wait. 
And when he hit him, boom, he caught him out right on the chin. Right on the chin. A lot of guys wouldn't have got up. They wouldn't have got up with that. Nah, that Zab is such a warrior. He tried, he, and I say, fuck. It looked worse than what it was because he shook it off the second time he got up. He yeah. was all right. But, yeah. you know, I mean, the drama of the whole fucking thing. And, you know, I felt him on that. I felt really bad. I've often said on my own channel. And eight, you know, two, three, four, five, four, eight. And then, then, then the, bell, the round was over. The bell had rung. So he said in the eight count, he didn't want to hit Zab to come to his corner. If he got in that corner, oh, my God. Mm. Been hell. When he came out for the third round, from then on, we'd have beat the Alicante. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Stormy, what'd you say, Stormy? No, I was just going to offer up that I've often said on my own channel that I always felt that Zab was more talented than Floyd Mayweather. I've yeah. said that Probably numerous that. occasions. Thank numerous you. occasions. You know, it's just a certain, you know, it, it's funny how things can happen where, like Yoel was just saying, he could see that Costa Zoo was trying to set him up for the right hand because that was his only shot. Yeah. That's it wasn't it. Zab's. It wasn't Zab's only shot, but the first round went so well for him yeah. that, you know, he was kind of feeling himself. And it can happen right. to anyone. It can happen to anyone. I just Ooh. recently spoke about, someone asked me about, Stephen Fulton fighting uh, Naoya Inoue. Right. And what do I think about that fight? I said, well, Fulton has the footwork, he has the hand speed and the boxing ability to do as he will against Inoue. But one thing I would be concerned about is him giving Inoue a chance to hit him. Because that's what you don't want to do. You right. don't want to give a guy who does what he does best the opportunity to do what he does best. Boxing is about taking that that he does best away from him and making him find a new way. You do what you do best. And if that is boxing, moving, slipping, sliding, adding up the points, you do that. The knockout will come if the other person makes the mistake, but never give that person that opportunity for you, especially when that's all they have is the puncher's chance. Right, right, right. Trick Nolte in the building. How are you, fam? Come on. Well, oh, great, man. Um, Glad yeah. to be here. Uh, Drew, Stormy, Freddie, Yoel. Hey, I appreciate you coming and talking with us, man. Um, uh, I got a question, um, and I'm going to go back to you, to the martial arts uh, um, background. Did you, did you ever get a chance to work with um, – or spar with like uh Chuck Norris or Char Carl Scott or Jim Kelly, any of them guys. You well, did you hear the question? So, oh, he's talking to me. What do you say? What do you say again? He wanted to know if um if uh, uh if you ever got to spar with like a Chuck Norris or Jim Kelly or any one of those guys. No, Bill Wallace. Bill, uh, you spar with Bill Wallace? Wallace. Yeah, I Bill, Wallace. <laughs> Bill like, Superfoot. Bill Superfoot. What was that like? Right, and yo, he was he's that foot that leg, but he only kicked with that left leg, that front left leg. So I you know, I knew it, but I mean he, he never he could he, he almost caught me, but he didn't catch me. But I was catching him with a lot of reverse punches, round kicks. He he said I was pretty fast and good, but he he tried to take my head off a couple of times, but I knew I, I put the leg that leg was like I mean like he was double jointed, like you know, that leg just come out and it was, had a lot of power too. Yeah, that's crazy. He 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 yeah. was indeed that name, man. Bill Superfoot. Yeah. Yeah, my he, he, God. He, yeah. My right. goodness, man! Right. One more no, Joe Louis, no, Joe Louis, no, Joe Louis, the martial the big white guy. Joe yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very familiar with Joe Louis. I was on the car with him a bunch of times. We fought together a bunch of times. I didn't, I didn't fight him, but I was on the car a lot. Wow! Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, Did you ever see yeah. Chuck Norris spa? Anything like that? I've seen Chuck spa before. Yeah, I've been, I've been in, I've been in Chuck's camp in California. I've been there. He's uh Chuck is uh Chuck is Chuck is solid. He's just a solid dude. I may block me very smart, double kick. You know, he stays basic. He's only get happy. But he's strong. Chuck is real strong. If Chuck hits you, you can feel, feel it. Chuck, you'll feel it. So he was he for real. He wasn't, he, wasn't, yeah, he wasn't super fast. You can see a lot of stuff coming. But, you know, he just kept, he was determined. He just kept doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But I know I know most of the guys in that era. Yeah. Wow, yeah. man. <laughs> Jim Kelly? You, you ever worked, you ever saw Jim Kelly put in work? Oh, I never, I, I never worked with Jim Kelly, but you know, I met him though. I met him in California one day, but I never worked with him. Though. No, no. How about Ron Van Cleef? 
Well, all right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just, just want to say this here. But like I said, there's something, something strange about Ron Van Dam. I, I believe it. I mean, I say strange, it's strange. Because me and him got into a real fight. Real. No no gloves. Just knuckles. What? We got me and Ron. We got a real fight. You know, hmm. I was maybe I was maybe a thirty degree, thirty degree black belt by then. Ron was saying he was already a red belt grandmaster. You know, but he he tried some fun. I don't know, but I don't want to. I don't even He tried something with me that night because he got the dojo. He sent everybody home for me to stay. And this and he tries some funny things. Yo, you know me. I'm from Brooklyn, baby. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Yo, you know, I'm gonna set it. Y'all know if he do that or not? But he found out because when he made a certain move, I just punched him dead in his face. Oh, yeah, we both punched, cracked it. Then he he he, 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 he went, oh, you motherfucker! And then yo, he gave me. The- <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, this was video tape. You see me? He was up there fighting. He, he did a jump kick, and I slipped it, and he went to hit. He bust the wall wide open. Then yo, he called me the roundhouse. He swept me down. Then he reverse punch. I got the way. I hit him with the elbow. I can remember that fight good. I mean, but I kind of got the best of him in that fight. And I'm gonna tell you truthfully, but I had him hurt a little. I ran out the fucking door. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so, I, 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 the, reason why, the reason why was that I was in Manhattan at his studio, and I know he knew everybody around there. I didn't know nobody, so I, I don't want nobody run up in here already beating the run. And so soon I, I think I knocked him into, into a chair or something, and I went. And it was an exit door. And I, ran, I hit the door and both I ran. It was too close. You know. Oh later man. On, later on, two years later, I got his mentor, uh, Tomax. The last Tomax, the last dragon. Oh, he, he, oh. he came. He, he came walking in the gym one day. And I went, well, wow. and yo, he wanted to. He wanted some sparring. I said, okay, yeah, I go. And oh. He really, he, he really didn't want to. He was looking at me like, quit, like, no, stop. But anyway, you know, he trying to show you. Like, yo, listen, literally, I beat the crap out of him. You and beat he, up. You beat up Bruce Lee, boy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Lee, boy. That's oh, that's that's that. I beat up. Yeah, beat Bruce Lee, boy, like that. <laughs> I beat the crap out of him, boy. Trust me, I did. <laughs> yo, wait a minute. Y'all know how funny this is? Yo, you want you to beat up the last dragon. That is fucking oh, hard. <laughs> he beat up Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy. He was a hell of a kick to get good kicks. But see, I know how to slip kick. When I don't slip, I catch him. Because, you know, I block him. But see, good fighters, remember, good fighters, they go into fight. They go, when you punch, you don't, you go, you slip the punch, you go inside. You go, you go in the punches. He would say, "No, I'm gonna get hit. No, you won't. I be moving your head." But you want to get close to him. And when you get close to him, I was always still a power puncher. When I get close to him, I I, I hurt you. And I, I think somewhere in that fight, I hurt Tommy. And for like he he was on his bicycle trying to get stay away from me. You know. Uh, yeah, but that, that's what happened though. Yo, you know, I'd like, to, I like to add something here about this, especially since hmm. Yoel's a martial artist. Uh, <laughs> look, 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 Shogun. <laughs> he, he got a picture of, of, of he got a picture of the Shogun in Harlem. He got a picture showing up right here. That is hilarious. Wow. <laughs> I think another comment, the comment, he's a good fighter. He's really, he's really, he's really yeah, he was, real. He, was real. he was for real. He was for real. He was for real. But yo, me, I'm vicious. I'm vicious. I'm, I come from the streets of Brooklyn. Best yeah, side of the Browns, yo. We never yeah, run out of And yo, you step in that ring with me, it's on. It's on. And yo, I train like an animal. So I know how to fight. And I don't never, ever get tired. You know? So yeah. that's what that's what that's what kind of do. That's how I come out. God, think I'm going to get tired? No, I don't get tired. Never. Top cardio, man. Top cardio. Yeah. Cardio, yeah. cardio, cardio, man. I wish... How, how much footage is there floating around of you in uh in, in that ring? But uh, what, uh boxing or karate? What anything, anything, anything. But you go, you go to YouTube and see me and Salerno in the garden, me and me and Clumpy in Atlanta City. A lot of fights. I got I got, I got a bunch of fights on TV. I, you know, a bunch of fights. I got NBC. I got CBS Sports. I fought on I fought on all that stuff. You know, wow, so. man! Wow. Oh, I just pulled it up. Look at that. <laughs> I just pulled it up. Be who? Uh, this so is Salerno Anthony Sal- 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 I like Salerno. the fight. Right, that's, what, that's what title, yeah. You know, he, Salerno. He was a white kid. I, I'm not, I don't get into the race black, white. I don't, I don't get, I feel, you know, he called me straight out a nigga. What? I, what? He, mm. the way, the way he, he called me a nigga and he said he going to beat. I, yo, that, that went through me, bro. That went through me. So I, so 
When he did that there, then he came up on my face. He chewing gum. But what I did, I stopped the shit right there. Oh, <laughs> good. That's exactly what I would have done, boy. Stop, 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 man. We did a garden. We did a man's garden. Boom! Look, you just landed right hand, right hand. Boom! Oh! Oh! Two right hands. Look at him. No, 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 no. Boom! Did you see? Did you see that look on his face? You see the look on his face, yo? How did how, yo? He threw the lazy jab. Joel caught him. He did it again, again. And then he slept. Look, look, look. Boom! Right over the top. Again. Boom! Oh, round four. Night, night. Look at his face. I got your nigga right here. Look at that. Yeah. Which one of oh, them nah. niggas hit me? <laughs> oh, nah. They let him go. They let him go. You know, that was, that was, they think you always had a chance. I, I'm trying to think. Oh, I'm thinking oh, oh, oh somebody oh, dial 911. Oh, oh. <laughs> they, they're giving him a standing eight count. Oh, yeah. Stop yeah. playing. Nah, nah. They were supposed to stop this. They were supposed they to give him a play. stool to sit down on. Oh, you know how they do. Yeah, he threw in a towel. Fight's over. Yeah, I got a lot of fights though on, on ESPN, uh, uh, MSG, uh, CBS Sports. Like, I got, I, I fought on, I fought on, I fought on, uh, I fought on CBS Sports with Tommy Hearn. Tommy Hearn was fighting Murray Sublin. Sublin, yeah. And, mm. I, and I, I was at the co main event and kicking kickboxing. So, I mean, back then it was, it was, it was great, man. It was good. You know, we didn't make the money you guys making today, even in boxing. But you know, we, we did, we did good. We trained hard. We did. We had to do. And I learned the hard way. That's why all my fighters that I got, I train. I'm working them hard. All my fighters is all. We want I got. So you you got them training at Gleason's? I, well, I, well, I got my own gym, but this is where, where, I, where, where I brought my boys up. You know, I trained at Gleason's. I, I grew up in Bedford Style. Oh, the style. Right in the style, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. I'm a, I want to come check those gyms, man. I, I ain't been to a gym in Brooklyn. In, shit, God, you never God. been to Gleason's? I've been to Gleason's twice. Oh, I, I was at what's the other gym? The other gym, the other big gym over there is um. Jim, I'm at Jim X. Jim X. Jim X. Jim X. Mm. Oh, Jim X. I haven't been there. The Jim X is a big. I mean, a lot of, lot of fights there. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. Tank is training there right now. Tank and uh, Richard, Richard Henderson, yeah. they're training there now. We get them on it. Wait, the the Tank is in New York. Yes. I thought yes. he was retiring. Uh huh. He put some bullshit out on Twitter. What was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. Day before you said, said he was retiring. I was like, "What is he talking uh, about?" You know, the fake go, uh, fake go left. You know, go left, right move. That's all he wanna. <laughs> you know, he wanna. I don't know. But yo, I think he go. I think he's close to getting along with Ryan Garcia. I, I, I think that fight is pretty close. I don't know. Yeah, man. That that's that's. So I see he's gonna get his ass whooped anyway. Yes, you're right. I think. I, I don't, mm. Ryan Garcia throws a lot of punches, but the tanks know how to get up to them. Get up to them. Mm. And the punches is way more effective. Because he ain't no big, no big puncher anyway. Right, you're right. <clears throat> I think Ryan Garcia is a marketing scheme until he proves otherwise. Yeah, he you definitely know. is because he sucks. I look at him, I say, damn, he ain't, he ain't got nothing that I see. Right, you're right. I mean, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got quick, quick punches, quick jab, all that. But you got to hit something, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hit something. And he ain't got no power. Where's his power at? Boxing is tiny. Once you want to get your timing, you just, you're done. You're done. Mm -hmm. Man, you see, his soul has already been snatched from him. He's done. Yeah, you, yeah. I don't know if you, I don't know if uh, um, Yoel or Freddie heard. You know, him and Tank had a run in at a at a club fairly recently. Oh, really? Yeah, they ran it. Uh, Tank was there with his people, and um, Ryan went in there. And as the story oh, goes, geez. he stepped the Tank, and that's what's up with the fight. And Tank. Mm -hmm. The Baltimore came out of him. We're not. We're not in a boxing ring. This isn't for show. This is real shit. And you in my face, and he mm -hmm. grabbed him. He, he basically draped him up. And Ryan got on his Instagram to my. I thought he was gonna steal my chain. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I would have done it. He, he I was gonna steal my chain. chain. <laughs> then he said, "Yeah, I knew he wasn't gonna steal it because there was a lot of security around." I said, "Wait a minute. What am I listening to? Mm -hmm. Why is he? Why is he telling the world that he just got punked?" By tank, why? Because that, that's what happened. Do you? I can't name one fighter. Yo, well, yeah. 
if that was a 25 year old Zab and he went to Tank and said, "What's up with our fight?" and 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 little ass Tank jumping Zab face, they fighting right there. That would have clipped them. Thank you. Said, Ryan ain't do shit. Ryan ran a, Ryan, Ryan ran a social media and told the story, and everybody was like, "Wait a minute, what? Why are you you a fighter? You should have been. You should have. Y'all should have been. It should have been a bar fight. Drinks flying. Y'all rolling on the floor." You remember when you remember when Ali grabbed Frazier and they started rolling on the floor? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Listen he, didn't, he didn't do shit, but he left shit. I think that they, they said that nobody filmed it, but there was a trail of doo doo on the floor when he ran out the, the door to get the hell away from Tank, and uh, oh, allegedly God. he left his chain there too. So you know, the first thing he wanted to do was run the social media. He's done. That boy yeah. is done. That's what he is. That's what he is. He he's a social media star. He ain't no champion. Not at all. Not at all, man. And he was online. I'm looking at the video. First of all, I thought he was joking. I thought he was like telling a long joke. But I'm looking at him. I said, yo, he really looked like he was about to cry. Yeah, Tank grabbed me by the neck and I thought he was going to take my chain. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. He did what? I don't <laughs> care if I'm going to get jumped. I don't care if it's 12 of y'all and one of me. If I ask you a question, you grab me by the collar. We fight. I'm just going to have to get stomped out. <laughs> That's crazy. I said, is he, he's really shit. That's a story you don't want to get out. That's the story right. that Tank was supposed to tell. And he was supposed to say, no comment. That ain't happened. He's supposed to front on that. You got on social media and said Tank punked you because that's what happened. He grabbed you by your collar. You ain't do nothing. Mr. Fast Hands, Mr. I'm fighting Manny Pacquiao tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'm going to fight Tank, and I'm going to fight Devin, and Devin's scared of me, and I'm going to take over 135. He ain't do shit. <laughs> he ain't do no. shit. He ain't do shit but have moose in his hair. And I tell <laughs> these people all the time, the di he might be a handsome kid, quote unquote, like Oscar, but the difference was Oscar was a real fighter. Yeah, Oscar, he has some skills. I ain't got He's nothing. a bitch ass nigga, but he has some skills. <laughs> You right, too. I agree with you. I agree with you. 100%. Right. You know, right. you know, Oscar, he has he has a decent box wreck. This kid Ryan hasn't done nothing but lie to the people. That's what he's mm -hmm. done. That's what he's done. And then the next the next time he gets into the ring. What was his last fight? He, he knocked out somebody. The guy was the guy was garbage. You know, who he knocked out? Ryan got some bum. He, he, yeah, he knocked out uh 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 what you call it for Javier Fortuna, who was like Fortuna. Yeah, who cares? really quick. I mean, he quit. He quit that shit. Yeah. You might not be able to find him on box wreck going forward. You can find him on career wreck, though. That's about the size of him. You know what I mean? So, so you well. Um, let, let me ask you. Because, uh, you know, we got, because, you know, we're in October. <laughs> Devin got some real work going. <laughs> we over here laughing at Ryan. Um, Devin has a task ahead of him. We're not, we're not over, we're not looking past Cambozo, but I'm just anticipating Devin beating him. Nothing's changed. There's nothing that I see that um that Cambozo can do to Devin. That there's nothing I can see to him doing different. His talent level won't permit it. I don't see him right. doing anything different in the ring that could disrupt what Devin did. So um Granted, he beats George Cambozo. What do you think is next? Is he staying at 135 or is he going to 140? What do you think is next for Devin? Uh, well, Devin, Devin told me like a couple about a month or so that he might feel like he want to move. He might, he might want to go to 140. He's mm. not sure. He, they want to make a fight with him and Lomo. That fight. Yeah, he told me that'd be a good move. Yeah, if he don't, if he can't fight Lomo, then he don't go to 40. Now, here's my take on Lomachenko, all right? He's one of those guys that doesn't need my help in promoting. And let me explain what I mean by that. And you're going you're gonna to understand exactly what I mean when I say this. Vasily Lomachenko, Gennady Golovkin, the Klitschko boys, Sergey Kovalev, Joe Calzaghe, they all have one thing in common. And I'll just leave it at that. Well, I'll leave that part at that. <clears throat> I'm not saying that they're trash. I'm not saying that they can't fight. What I'm saying is they don't need my fucking help in promoting. And I'm just being honest with that. Um, my problem 
with Vasily Lomachenko is that he had an opportunity to fight Devin. And um, he ducked him, bottom line. When it was Devin's turn, this franchise status just appeared out of nowhere. Um, between Mauricio Suleiman, or Mauricio Silly Man, that's what I call him, between mm -hmm. Mauricio Silly Man and Lomachenko, one of them aligned. All right, Silly Man said that um, the franchise status has to be requested. Vasily Lomachenko said, I never asked for it. So he, whether he asked for it or not, if uh, Mauricio Silly Man offered it to you, you accepted it. And that's how he didn't, that's how he avoided Devin Haney. So I had limited respect for him at that point. Once he did that, that was gone. So my take on it is this. Devin Haney wants all the smoke with everybody. I think he, if he could, he'd fight once a week. Because he's a throwback fighter. That's who he is. Um, in my opinion, uh, granted he beats uh, Cambozo, I think he should, you know, tell Lomachenko he could get his ass in line. Here's why. This man is undisputed. Devin Haney's undisputed, okay? And somehow, whenever I look on a goddamn pound for pound list, if he's on it, he's low. But Vasily Lomachenko always finds himself as number six or seven on everybody's list. The man now what? is beltless. He's coming back from this quote-unquote war, and he needs a fucking tune-up. I ain't hear Usyk say I needed a tune-up. They were both doing over there doing the same work. Nothing. Don't 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 front for me. And it's a noble thing to go fight with your com with your con country. I'm not talking about that though. But the man is getting coming over here talking about yo. I need a warm up. I'm gonna fight this fight. Then I want Devin Haney. Fuck you, dude. Because when Devin Haney wanted to smoke, you ducked him. That's what happened. That's what happened. We have all the receipts we need. So my thing is, granted, he beats Cambozo. He should make this motherfucker wait. Devin got all the options in the world. He got everything at 135. He can go to 140. Make that clown wait. I want to see Devin versus Tank two-fight deal uh, uh, um, wherever they want, except Vegas, because I don't trust Vegas at all. Yeah. Bring it to the bar place. And, or, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me say something real quick. Let me say something. Go ahead. All, all you guys is boxing, historians, you know boxing, you've seen boxing, you watch boxing. Mm -hmm. My thing is this, and this concerning, and yo, I tell, I mean, I, I say this, we know Floyd. I, yo, that's my dude. We talk, we cool. But my thing is this here. You got an undefeated record, 15 and 0. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my whole thing is this. When you say you champion, you, you're the best ever, champions fight all over the world. They yep. go to Japan. They go to they go to Russia. They go to Germany. They go. Uh, it's it's got you know. Floyd has last maybe seventeen fights in Las Vegas. Every fight is in Las Vegas. They were saying Floyd, no, come to my country. No, fight me in Vegas. So to me, that's, that's a little that's a little funny right there. I mean, yo, I mean, you, yeah. You know me. Uh, you know me. I'm. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna just skip leave to that. I ain't gonna make a comment. Cause everybody already think I'm a hater on him anyway, so. <laughs> I'm, not, yeah, I'm not hating on him. I'm just telling you. I'm just, nah, I'm just, I'm just saying. They, if I make a statement, I don't care if it's, if it's, you know, I don't really have no bad opinion. Everybody gonna say I'm hating on him anyway, so. Well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, saying, that I'm saying that, but I'm not hating on him. I'm just saying that. We're, right, right, I'm, right, right. I'm, right. I'm right. all over the world. Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Ken North, they fought everywhere. They fought everywhere. For 16, 17 fights. Uh, you know, so I mean, you're a boxing guy, you know, you're right, yo. Well, it's called world champion, yeah. It's called world, world champion, yep, right. They, but, but the thing is, they, those guys back in those days didn't duck anybody, right? They fought right. everybody, right? They fought you in the backyard, they don't care, yep, yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't trust Vegas. You know, um, Vegas is really terrible. Vegas is bad. That's what got my title. They stole my title. How you knock a guy down four times and lose? Talk about that yeah. fight real quick, Freddie. Remind the public. Yeah, Rafael Rellis. Everybody know. They, everybody know. And they, you know, he going around bragging about how he beat me. I was like, how you beat me? I never went down. In twelve rounds, he went down four times. Wow. 
Wow. But he won the belt. How? That Vegas boat, that's basically, you know, the, the ship was in. So yep, and then, then I made I protested the fight, and they backed it up and said, no, he won. He gave it to him. So you know they had big money. They got big money to, to steal my shit, so. Yeah, you want to know something that's funny, <laughs> uh, Freddie? Raphael Wellis last year said at 49 he was coming back. Coming back for what? He wasn't shit when he was there. Yeah, he said he was trying to come back. I'm looking right at it. He said he was trying to come back to fight Oscar De La Hoya. He a fool. And had you not well, had the incident, yeah. I want I, I would like to see you get back in the ring with him. Nah, he wouldn't do that. He know what happened in, my, in the fight right. with me. I, I damn near kill that punk ass. He don't want no more of that. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. That was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm over I went down. I was stopped. I hit him so hard in the first round. <laughs> he got up and and come out with that, you know, trying to act like he was gonna come right back at me. And I put him down again. Right. So put him down twice in the first in the first round. Put him down again in round eight, and put him down again in round ten. And the referee oh. kept giving him all kind of time to get himself together. Double ten, double ten, seven rounds. I'm knocked out. Should have won that fight easy. easy. Yeah, <clears throat> and they and they talking about oh, you know he won. It was close. It was how could it be close? Since and your name is decision, jackass. It don't make no sense. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know Vegas is like Vegas put the shaft to you. Yep, exactly. I mean they just give it to whoever they want to give it to. That's right. Right. Long as long as you got a name, <clears throat> they want to make your name bigger. That's Money. it. Money talks. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. What is the? Because you know they wanted the Delahoya fight. They wanted me and Delahoya to fight, mm-hmm. and then because Delahoya, because I scared Delahoya at, at the um, press conference. Right. He was at the press conference for the for the um the Pius fight, mm-hmm. and I told him that you know you don't want to fight me because they were top ranked trying to push the fight, and I told him you don't want to fight me because I'm gonna take that gold medal out your ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I said, I, 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 I said, I'm, I'm being there trying to kill you. I ain't trying to beat you. I'm trying to kill you. Right. And then that right there, I caught myself right out of that fight. I live in Miami, but I'm in, I'm in Philly right now, but I live in Miami. Oh, okay, that's the one to know. You live in Miami. Yeah, I got my kids up there. Right. Okay, yeah. You know I'm from Brooklyn. I want to just talk. Oh, yeah. I know. I know it's you. <laughs> Man, listen. But, but you're right, but you're right, 100%. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you that don't, all right, when we was at the Barclays, right, Um, I had took a picture with Zab, right? And yeah. I, get, I gave him a pound, right? Now, I'm a big dude. I'm 6'2", 220. I'm a big guy. I could palm a basketball and everything. I gave Zab a pound. His <laughs> fucking hands felt like sandpaper. <laughs> I said, what the <laughs> fuck, yo, dude? I'm telling you, I said, yo. <laughs> I said, yo, Zab... And I'm, I'm significantly bigger than him. And I said, I'm pretty sure if he punched me in the face, I'd feel it. Yeah. <laughs> yo, I was yeah. like, God damn, man, what the fuck? Yo. Um, well, God, yo, yo, something. God bless it. God bless his dad right now because he's dead, but he's a hell of a fighter. Turn on Whitaker. Oh, Whitaker, man, yes. Whitaker, Whitaker and Zab did like over 100 rounds. I mean, mm. Whitaker said that was a, that's one of the best fighters he ever seen compared yep. to him. Zab yep. was like, Zab had all the moves, the quick, the speed, and the defense. Mm. Whitaker loved him. He loved him. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Whitaker liked it because he was a better version of him. Yeah, yeah. And and Whitaker, no, when he fought me, I beat his ass. But they gave it to him, and I ended up. Play- <laughs> I didn't argue because I I, I believe in the in the in the in the old rule. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you're fighting a champion, you can't beat him. You gotta you gotta take that belt. Yeah. And I did good, and I I outpointed him, but that was it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't dominate him, so I could I didn't argue about when they gave when they gave the belt back to him. I didn't argue because I know what a true champion is supposed to do. He's supposed to take that belt, and I didn't take. It. I got you right. You're right, Freddie. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, man. Um. Oh man, Zab. I mean, Joel. You know what I want to talk to you about? Um. I wanted to talk to you about um. Like like I said, I'm when a fight is coming out of New York, I I just automatically support him, and um. There was a situation a couple of years ago with this guy who turned out to be a fucking cheater, the Hebrew hammer. 
Oh, see this? See this uh, click, 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 tell them? Yes. Talk to us hey, about listen. that. Now listen, man. That fight was like, well, that fight right there, I retired after that. I have had brain surgery after that fight. Yeah. The reason why, because uh, Pete Brosky was the president of USA Boxing. Pete, me and Pete Brosky became very close as friends. Mm-hmm. But Pete Brosky was the one that called me up and told me that come both that uh, see this club. Jesus Kelvin was on steroids. Yep. I'm like, what? Mm. Yo, listen. So you figure like it's here. He was, they were shooting him up all the, for a whole month in Florida. It was giving slow. They came, they came to New York before the fight. But my, my brother came to me doing this. We fight. We fought crazy on a Friday night. We, we, yeah. we, there's this gavel. We're going to ring around 9, 10 o'clock. Around 1, 32 o'clock, my brother came and got me up in my, up in my room. He said, yo, he said, please, now I didn't work it out. I said, he's working out. I said, he's working out. He got to fight Zab a couple of hours. Anyway, we peeked down there. This man was this man stayed in that gym to one, two. He didn't leave that gym to like four o'clock. He stayed there three hours, hitting the bag, jumping rope, pad work. I mean, like a regular workout. I'm, I'm looking at him like, nah, something wrong. This is the day, this is the day of the fight. Mm. I'm going, nah. He's doing he, he was working out like that during the day of the fight? Like a maniac for three hours. That's crazy. Like a maniac. Then but then I found later on that he said, I mean they all, they all came out. He was he was on he was on that stuff. He was on it because yo, in the fight. Now hit him with a hook and an uppercut. He tucked it around his chin and came back with another hook. Everything hit the cheeky, clean as you see it, ready to fall and go down. He went down, he fought the ropes, he came up growling. Ah, what? Yo, and he, he, he just came for it, throwing punches. Zaz slipped, slipped, got hit. But Zaz hit him with so many what happened. You can't go back and show them. You can't do it. They got their own mm. government, their own government body where you can't get in there. They're not letting you in there. You know, that's that's you, fucked up, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, that is just I, after that night, that was when we was eating something. Zab said, Alba, he said, my head is killing me. I said, what? He said, my head is killing me. So I said, yo, let's go. We're going to the hospital. And I got, I jumped in the car, boom, we shot out. We had in the hospital like in 10 minutes. And they did a vet. They said, yeah, he got, he got bleeding on the head, on the brains. Man, I was bleeding so mad at brain. that, man. And then to yeah, find out that uh, this motherfucker was juiced out of his mind, that's attempted juice, murder. They said, they said he had so much stuff in him that he had the strength of like three men. That's not bad. Yo, we was, that was hitting him right on the chin. I mean, you watch, go back and watch that. He was hitting him right on the chin. The whole, everything was landing. The kid was just going, wah, 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 wah. And he ain't shit. He, he ain't shit because I think now, he got knocked out a couple of fights later. Now, Yoel, I got a question to ask you. We, we cover several subjects on this channel here on this show on Sunday evenings. Based on your surmise, what, 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 your son went through with that guy. You just said that they said that this man was so juiced up, he had the strength of about three men. Check this out. Tyson Fury <clears throat> was put on the canvas early in his career <clears throat> by a journeyman heavyweight. Then he was put on his, on the canvas by a cruiserweight, uh, Cunningham. Deontay Wilder in this trilogy with him put him on the canvas four times. And everybody knows how Deontay Wilder punches, right? But this is my question to you. Particularly in the third fight, Wilder had him down on on, on the uh, canvas twice in that third fight. But when the fight came to an end in that 11th round, Fury was neither breathing hard mm-hmm. And he looked as if he had only gone about two or three rounds, not right. 11. But okay. despite being dropped by Wilder, Wilder, twice. What are your thoughts? Uh, listen, I, 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 I got some. I think I read it not too long ago where they, they say something was wrong with Tyson Fury gloves. They showed his gloves like flappy. It was like flappy. I got I to gotta find an article again. But then, then something was wrong with his gloves. Like it was loose. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know, man. But when he put it out there, it wasn't good. You know, uh, I don't know. You know, but, you but, know, I, but I'm talking about the third fight, though, because of what what you were just saying about what your son went through. You see, huh? what what you were saying that your son went through with that guy who was juiced up. But yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, what I'm asking you is, Fury. In, in that third fight with Wilder, I'm not talking about the first two fights, but I'm talking about primarily this third fight. Getting right. hit by a fighter who can punch like Wilder 
and being in the 11th round, not breathing hard, was able to pretty much take those punches from Wilder without being unconscious, like 90% of his other opponents. Your right. thoughts on that? Because remember, Fury was down by lesser fighters. But he was able to go the distance with the most fearsome puncher in the division as if nothing was happening. I mean, that don't seem a little strange. Well, then, well, then they catch then they catch Canelo last year. Uh, collect Canelo, Canelo. Then they catch him with steroids. They called him a Clinton Butero. They sure did. Yep. Right. They sure they did. Know. So they caught Canelo. So, yo, what I'm saying, though, a lot of these fighters are taking that stuff, and yo, and yo, you never know it. You gotta just know how to just watch, watch these ones. So well, I think it wasn't was no blood work neither with that. You know? Well, let me let me let me bring this to light um, because we speak to people in the camp, and um, I was at the fight in Vegas, and I know when that eleventh round that bell rang, I visibly saw Deontay fading because it's a, he's a heavyweight, and then right? I'm looking at Fury. When they said seconds out, he jumped up and he's bouncing around like it's round one. Right, he's right. six nine, three hundred pounds. I said, "What the fuck is going on?" And and whatever happened, happened. But then, two things happened. Number one, I called Tate Jones and I said, "Bro, you know they switched the referee. Y'all supposed to have what was this guy Ortega? He's now uh, the ref for the co-main event. Y'all got a whole nother ref for the main event." Now, that ref that they have, this guy was in the head of a controversy. I want you guys, for those of you in the chat that don't know, look up the Joseph Agbeko, Agbeko Abner Marez ref. And y'all already know, this guy's one of the Fantastic Four, I call him. Right. This guy was in the top. He, there was like 500 low blows in that fight. He didn't call it. Okay. Now, boom, he's the head ref. He's the main. He's a ref of the main event for a championship bout, his first one. I said, so that was strange. I called Tay Jones. I said, you know about that? He said, no. That's number one. Number two, I found out that this motherfucker, first of all, he pulled out of the fight in July, postponed it all the way to October, flies to Europe for his sick kid, allegedly, comes back. Now, this is all during COVID. Before he left the States, during COVID, he's seen out, he said he had COVID He's out and about at a at a uh, at a car dealership, an exotic car dealership. He's rolling around the casinos, you know, with no mask on. But he allegedly had COVID. Then flies to Europe, where Vada can't get to him, or Usada or whoever they can't get to him. Then he comes back to the states, and right before the fight, I don't know if it was the day of or the week of, he got injections in his elbow allegedly. But meanwhile, his 300-pound ass is bouncing around in round 11 like it was round fucking one. Well, what, what was the injection for? What was that for? The they were never for? clear. They were never clear. They said it was in, in, injections in his elbow. That's all I heard. What, what we have heard consistently out of his camp and the people that work with him and other fighters, including the young lady that Clarissa Shields is getting ready to fight on the 15th, mm -hmm. they pull out of fights just a couple of weeks before the fight with undisclosed injuries. And then they have the dates reset a duration later. Now, the queen dying before the weigh-in of the fight between Shields and Marshall gave her the exact same opportunity because the fight was pushed from, from early September all the way to August 15th. So if she's going to be cycling, it works in her favor because there's a fury in her camp, That's Peter right. Fury, the trainer, and Andy Lee, and uh, there's another known convicted criminal that they've brought in in her Peter camp. Clark. Peter Clark. Peter Clark. And all of these people are associated and attributed to some nefarious dealings. In the, in the aspect of boxing. So it's like people are not looking at these things, but it's always an undisclosed injury. Undisclosed. 
And no one asked. No one, the media, when I say no one asked, the media that's supposedly covering the fight, we ask. Us out here on these airwaves with what we do, we ask those questions that nobody else asks. But we're not in that position because they close us off, right? right. But at the same time, it needs to be inquired that, okay, you had an undisclosed injury. What is that? We know that in professional sports here in America, football, basketball, when you're using PEDs, it leads to a lot of soft tissue injuries. Yes. It leads to a lot of soft tissue injuries because medically, muscle tissue and everything, when it's had enhancements and whatnot, it's easier to get injured. Especially if you're cycling on and off improperly and things of that nature, you need a certain amount of time for recovery and things of that nature. So understand that we, we pay attention to these things, but nobody is questioning it when these folks are doing these things and then they get away. That woman has been knocking people out, Savannah Marshall, like she's a man. That's right. And She's only been doing that since she's been over there in the UK fighting because she won't fight anywhere else. And now we found out that she can't go anywhere else because she's on the no fly list. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't doing this to people in the amateurs. Because if you're strong, you're strong. Stop right there, Stormy. Yo, well, who was the person that couldn't fly to Australia and be in uh, um, Cambosa's camp? Who did what? There was ben somebody Davis. from Ben Davidson wasn't able to fly to Australia and be in the oh, camp with with uh um with Cambozo. You know about that? I don't know about that. Okay, you, well, see, this is why this show that we do. This is why it's important. You know why that that guy could not come and be in Cambozo's camp? Why? He's on a no fly list for being affiliated with a notorious drug kingpin named Daniel Kenahan. Anybody that has been affiliated with this guy cannot go up in the air and leave their country. They have to stay their ass right there until they're done investigating this guy. America has a $5 million bounty on this man's head. $5 million. Okay. Now, he couldn't come to Australia because he's being investigated. But they tried to keep Bill and the rest of his camp out of Australia for some shit that they did goddamn 25 years ago. Longer yep. than that. You see what I'm saying? So yep. this guy, this guy, Daniel Kennehan, you, you remember MTK Global, that promotional company? What is it again? What, what? MTK Global. No, I don't know. I don't remember. No. Yeah, well, no. here today, gone today. They they, they folded because that was <laughs> Daniel Kennehan's company. And he had hundreds of fighters. And they're all gone now. They have nothing. They, they, they have no promotion. Now, what reason why I'm bringing this up is because that's why Savannah Marshall can't come to America because she's on that fucking no fly list. Is that the one? Who's your shield for the fight on next? Yeah. And this, this, this woman, Savannah Marshall, was aligned with this notorious worldwide wanted man. So Shields is going over there? She's going over there on the 15th. Uh-huh. So, they, and so these people aligned themselves with, train, with, with, these, with these cheaters. And the reason why we brought up the reason why we brought up the situation with um what happened with your son is because um there's cheating in boxing. Big time, big time. And I was enraged with what happened with Selden in, in, in Zab. I was enraged. It's like, man, somebody needs to kick his ass on some on the street. Level. The doctor told me that Zab had two days. After, after two days, and he was going to die. Point blank. They said, we, we got to do emergency surgery. Zab was like, no, I don't want surgery. I don't want to, you know, they said, listen, you walk out of the hospital, the sign is here. Because you're not going to be two days, you're going to drop dead. That's how bad it was. Mm. We went on, I'm you know, sorry to hear that, we went, man. We went on and did it. We went on and did it, you know. Sell them, sell them, don't know. He really don't know. I don't want to say his name on the radio, but it's just, you know, it is, I mean, in time, everything be dealt with. In time. This is this is the hurt business, and at any point, you know, there's fighters that we don't even know on low, low, low cards that have died in the fucking ring. Yo, that's a temple. What you call that? That's a tempted murder. 
That was the last that, one. That's what that was. That would have been. Right. Murder. That's what it was. That's what it was. And he he, he <clears throat> should he should have got locked up for that, man. This is complete and total bullshit. Yeah. And yeah. this is why we're so with sticklers for things like this. Because it's unfair. You can already die in the fucking ring. Listen, man, if you don't hey, have look, the if you don't have the talent, don't be in there. That's it. Hey, look, his man, look, his manager was Pete Brosky. His trainer was Pete Brosky. Pete Brosky was the one that called me and told me, Judah, I know you too long. I love you to death. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Clean himself is on the shit. And he named the, the, the different he named four drugs that he was taking. I was like, what? He said, yo, four. I can't do you. You guys been good to me. I know you for years. He said that was not good. What he did to your son, but he, he named the drug. So we, we try to think we try to do a lawsuit and all that. But John LaGuardia had that block. We could not get in any of the races because they wouldn't let they, they wouldn't take it. That's, they, that's how that went. You see that? They knew exactly what the fuck they was doing. Yeah, so, exactly. Right. So for right. All, all of you big brains out here that think we're just making it up because we're black and we we can't take a loss. No, you hear it here. I'm talking about the fairness of the sport. This is why I don't fuck with Canelo Alvarez. He's already good in the ring. Why did he need right. Clembuterol? And then why he got to lie about it? Told me he ate a bad hamburger. Whatever the fuck his excuse was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's not going to get... Canelo's not going to get no limitations when he fights either... Uh, he fight... What is it? Child or Buzzes? Or he fight Benavides? He's sucking both of them. He's sucking them. Man, I I've lost all respect for Canelo, man. I've lost so much respect for that guy. I've lost all of them. I ain't never had none before. Triple, Triple G is old. He's 47 years old. He's too, he's too, he's too, he's too, that fight wasn't going to happen. He's too, fight one of them young bucks. Fight the young, you got two guys. Like <laughs> fight one of them. He, he, he is not for his contemporaries. Um, he, tra he tried the legacy <laughs> pad. He tried to run up the cruiserweight and fight some African dude, Mbaku, whatever the fuck it was. That didn't right. pan out. <laughs> Then he stopped at 175 and tried to pick on uh, um, the least dangerous in Bivol. And Bivol outboxed his ass because Better Beer would have knocked his ass into next week. Yes. And, and yes. since he lost, then he ended up fighting Triple G. And that, and that fight with Triple G, after the second fight, he said the fight was out of system. He said he didn't want to fight the guy anymore. You know, right. then he fought him in a close <laughs> fight. So what is he going to do now? You know what I mean? Um, he's full of shit. You got Benavidez there. You got Andre there. You got two Charles there. Fight your contemporaries and make me respect you. I don't respect what the fuck this guy's doing. Right. You're right. Right. You know, like he, one of the bad boys. Yeah. I mean, oh. it, this this is ridiculous what he's done, man. Um, Trick. You on mute, brother? You got any questions, my brother? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I was and I'm listening too, man. Um. Uh, man, just taking all this stuff in. Um. Uh. Man, I had a. I did have a question. Um. Oh shoot! Um, 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 um. Oh, I got a question, man. Um, is there any way you can clear this up, man? About uh, Zab and uh, Buster Rhymes? What happened between them two? I heard Zab knocked him out. What? You knocked out oh. Buster Bus? <laughs> Zab, Zab, you, Zab, you what? He said I heard what? Zab he... knock Buster Rhymes out. Is that true? No, I don't. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. No, I, oh. Buster Rhymes. Okay. Buster Rhymes are people. That's, that's my man. Yeah, that was the, yeah, that was a rumor that was going out. That was a rumor that was going out. No, they had some no, beef. Mm -hmm. Negative. Negative. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. um cool. What what's Zab up to nowadays, man? He got a, he's in California now. Woodland, in California. He got his own gym, big gym, Delahoya, all of them, all of them, all of them come over here and they do with him. He got a we got a thing going with Mike Tyson. We got a weed thing going. Ah. But he got it's mm. doing that, and he, and he, he got a, po a podcast. He got a podcast. They do every once a week or something. So he he's doing great though. He's doing really good. Good. Mm. Excellent, man. Um, I remember hearing Fat Joe tell a story about how Mike uh, rolled up to this club and it was full to capacity, and they didn't let Joe in. So Mike walks up and says, "What you doing standing out here?" He said, "Joe, they they're not letting us in. It's a fire hazard." And Mike mm. went to the bouncer. He saw chasing the fucking bouncing between park cars. <laughs> and I laughed because I said he is 100 percent telling the truth. You know why? I was up the block. I saw it. Me and my friends, we were up the block. I saw it. I say, like, is that Mike Tyson? Big old six foot five bouncer, 300 pound dude getting chased between park cars. 
That's yeah, right. Mike was crazy. Ain't nobody going to fight that motherfucker. Right. That, that, right. that shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. I said, I, and when Joe told the story, I said, yo, I saw that shit. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was up. I forgot where I was. It wasn't the tunnel. Um, Zach, uh, Joel, you remember the tunnel, right? In Manhattan? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Like, <laughs> Like water, like water, all that. I remember all that, yeah. The tunnel was wild, man. The tunnel had a co ed bathroom, y'all. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Me and Mike Tyson, like, Mike always, he, we got they got stories on me and Mike. Mike was around me since he was 13, 14 years old. I've been around Mike in the streets, right? No we, me and Mike used to run the streets. I didn't go test, take my car, go pick his ass up. We go around all day, me and him. He was, he was, going, he was going to the Olympic crowds, he was going to the crowds up in California, but we, me and him, was real tight. Then we was, we run around Brooklyn. I tell you what, he did a funny story. I said yeah, real quick. We was in Albany Square Mall. We was in the mall, and yo, you know, people seeing Mike. They go, oh Mike. He was only he was he was he was only maybe eight and old, nine and old. But you know, females would see him and go, oh Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson. <laughs> so the girl came in with a dude, a dude that came in with a boyfriend. I guess he was like six five, figure like two fifty. Mm. And she said, let me, let me go, let me go get a picture with Mike Tyson. So I'm standing there. I, I, I look at Mike with Mike. I always said to Mike, was don't do it. He looked at me, he smiled. <laughs> the girl came over, she hugged Mike, Mike hugged her, and then Mike grabbed a handful of ass. Oh. <laughs> Yo, I said, hey, Mike, 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 I can say things that Mike know. Mike don't go, oh, brother, I was young, I didn't know, I didn't know. But look, when he did that, I was like, oh my God. I said, it's on. The dude looked over and looked at Mike. You know, Mike did that little neck thing, we rolled his neck, and he looked at Duke. Yo, Duke, I couldn't believe it. He looked at the floor. He looked at the floor, he turned around, he goes, girl, come on, let's get out of here. Oh. That was it. Oh, man. Mike is crazy, man. Listen, I say some stories on Mike, we'll be here all night. <laughs> you ain't lying. Yo, you, you, were, you wasn't there when he, uh, <laughs> I mean, look, man, when 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 um when he flew what's his name's head and his eye was swollen for like 12 months. Um, come on, Mitch, 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 yeah, were you there that night? <laughs> no, I didn't, no, I wasn't there, but you know the funny thing? I trained Miss Green. I was training him. And but see, Mick, Mick, Mick got a big mouth. So he do got a big fucking mouth. Yeah, I heard. And he yeah, told, yeah, yeah. Right. And he, and, yo, and, he, and he dibble and dabbles every time. <laughs> but he told Mike some wild shit. And I, I said, but I told Mitch, Mitch, you should have never said that and get to that man's face. There's nobody going to do it. Look, yeah, but Mitch was crazy. That motherfucker so Mitch Bo, crazy, too. I'm with, I'm with Riddick Bo. We come into the garden, the Golden Club. Mike is sitting in the audience. He signed an autograph on there. But Riddick Bo will tell me, Oh, yo, Judah, yo, I'm gonna go over there and tell Mike, he holding my belt. He holding my belt. I said, what? Man, leave that man alone, Bo. Anyway, he went. He went to, he went to Mike and said, yo, Mike, you holding my belt. Yo, I'm gonna get you, sucker. All that. Yo, Mike, you gonna tell him? Mike, Mike. And Mike looked over at me. And I, I was like, I don't know. Mike jumped up out of the seat, man. It took him like 15 guys to hold Mike. But yeah, and Bo took up and ran. Bo ran. <laughs> I was, you know, I was, I was in, and I was in the garden. I was in the soul form. I could not believe. It. I said, "Look at this shit right here." You know, Mike was, "I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him." You know, Bo, 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 Bo. come on, you holding my belt? I said, "Bo, leave the man alone. Get him in a real fight." That's why Bo never fought Mike Tyson. Know that? Don't we'll fight Mike. He wouldn't fight Mike. He said, "No, we we'll fight him." Who really, Bo? Right, you're right. Remember, they both from Brownsville. That would have been a good fight. <laughs> He would not fight Mike Tyson because he knew Mike Tyson. Nah, that wouldn't have been a good fight because when he hit him with the hard shot, Bo would have quit. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. Bo, Bo, Bo's my man, too. That's my man. But see, the thing, see, the thing about me, anything I tell you guys, I, I you know, have a certain name, I can say it in their face, but they know it's true. And they're not going to get mad. They don't get mad. Oh, yo, Judah. Oh, they might say, yeah, you can remember that? But that was a long time ago, Judah. I, I, you know, I didn't know this. They're like, all right, cool. But it happened, though. It fucking happened. My God, everyone was amped for that. I would like to see that a battle for Brooklyn. Um, yeah. Um, my, my my boy just texted me. Do you know a, a fella? Well, a late trainer by the name of John Arthur. Yeah, John Arthur. That was my oh, man. That was family. That was like family right there. That's family. You might, you're John Arthur. Um, actually, I was the bodyguard for Emmanuel Lewis Webster. Oh yeah. Right? Oh man, Emmanuel Lewis. That's a name I ain't heard <laughs> in a long time. Well, well, I bought. I want to buy. I got. I, I live in Emmanuel Stewart's house. I mean, Emmanuel. I bought his house. I bought his house from John Arthur. Uh, oh and, wow! And his wife, his wife, his wife, Margaret. Margaret was Emmanuel. Emmanuel Lewis Webster. That was his mother. And uh, and then we we were meeting John. Always, John was in the martial art too. So we always, you know, we always, you know, train together, work together. John was really good. When I heard that he uh 
was sick. He got sick. So he was sick for a while before he died. Right. And uh, so I kept calling, making sure right there. And one day that I just got the call that he just died. You know, so yeah, yeah. so I love it. It's a good dude, good dude, man. You um, you cool with Shannon Briggs? Wow. I, mean, I trained Shannon. No, he never. <laughs> you know, Shannon will tell you I gave his first instructions up. I gave him. Some. He said, you mm. I put him on a job, put him, put him on a 731 local, and I felt he was so happy. So he, was, he was like, yo, Judah, I ain't got no money. He didn't want to go out there and do nothing. So I said, you know what? I'm going to put you on a job. Don't worry about it. And I think two or three days, I put him on a job. He'll tell you, he'll tell you, he'll tell you what I did. He'll tell you. <laughs> Shannon's that guy, man. I like Shannon, you know, Shannon don't like me. No? Like me. Nah, because I, I cussed him out at, uh, at this boxing match. Oh, oh no! He's what trying happened? to tell me, trying to tell me, to shut up! That I don't know nothing about heavyweights, mm. and I I cussed him out. <laughs> Cause I knew Shannon for a long time, right? You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, like who he was fighting, and, and when he had the fights, I you know I was trying to, you know, I always was looking, you know, looking for him to win, but a couple of fights he didn't win, and then when he was talking shit to me, he told me shut up. You you're a fucking lightweight. You can't be talking when heavyweights are talking. And we was at a fight, and I said, "No, you bitch ass nigga. That's why you get your ass whooped." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talking all that shit, got your ass whooped. And he got mad. I'm like, you, you keep talking with your ass. I said, "Well, then we gonna be some fighting motherfuckers because I don't give a fuck about what you say." Right. So he right. he get telling you go on go on about your business. You know, go with them 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 little fighters. If you show any if you show any kind of weakness, you got it. He was skeptical. Being used to start with what you said, that's why he didn't do. I know Shannon real good. Shannon, mm. if Shannon can pump you, he's going to do it. But if you stand up to Shannon, he's going to go, all right, man, all right. All right. Even though he's built like King Kong, he's going to Yeah, it's a big motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I, I was like, let's go, the only, the only guy that tried to pump me up was um Trevor Bird. Okay. Right. Talk shit to me in the, in, in the gym. I was scared of him, and this and that. He'll whoop my ass. We got in the ring and sparred. I beat his ass, bust his nose, his lip. And he got mad, picked me up near, and told me he gonna throw me out the ring. Yeah. And my trainer told, told him to put me down. You know what I'm saying? So he put me down. Told me you, you gonna learn who you, who you talk to as a man, bitch ass thing. Nobody give a fuck. I said, I still think you're a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Because number one, if you were so tough. You know what I'm saying? We just dealing with hands. We sparring. Right. But you try to pick me up, try to pick me up off the floor because you know I will be your way. <laughs> and he got mad. <laughs> he got mad in the motherfucker. And then they told him, <clears throat> and he, the guy was with him, told him to get dressed and let's get out of here. Mm. So he went in the back. <clears throat> and I was I was laughing. I mean, that motherfucker was huge. Yeah, he was. That was big. fucked his ass up. He didn't expect that from a little guy. I was 140, and I'm beating his ass. He was mad in the motherfucker, man. Who's that, Trevor? Trevor? Trevor. Trevor Burby. Yeah, I beat the shit out of that motherfucker. We was at Fifth Street Gym. Oh, Fifth Street. I know that. Yeah, he was. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Like, yeah, over there. He got chopped with a um, machete in the head. Right, right. In, in, in Jamaica. In Jamaica, yeah. yeah. His nephew killed him. He, he was in, uh, he should know better, man. You go over there, them people crazy, man. Yeah. Jamaica, you can't it, start shit with them. Nah. nah they don't play, that. man. They'll fuck your ass up quick. Yeah, rest in power to Trevor, man. I, I think his, nep- his trick, his, his nephew murdered him for over money or something, right? Yeah, his nephew killed him. Yeah. Unbelievable, man. That's so that was the motherfucker, that was his, yeah, that motherfucker that did, he hit him and chopped him in his head with a um machete. Oh that was man. crazy. Oh man. Uh, you can't get how you get that mad with with family member. You can't get oh that. My gosh. Like shit, they hit him with a machete. Come on now. Yeah, you're right. That's that's awful. According that's to Larry awful. Holmes, he probably yeah, deserved it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, Larry did not like him. Larry don't he have nothing me. good to he say about me. Trevor. Larry Bird. Holmes kicked me. But hey, <laughs> one thing one thing about Larry, Larry Holmes was a dickhead. Larry Holmes. <laughs> Thought he was bigger than everybody else. Didn't give a fuck about nobody else. He was talking shit to me. I said, I mean, you take your fat ass on, but nobody give a fuck about your bitch ass because you're a heavyweight. <laughs> wow. And everybody looked at me like, man, you know who you're talking to? 
I like Freddie. <laughs> I a, man, I don't give a fuck how big you are, man. You ain't gonna talk to me any kind of way. Right. I'll right. go, I'll go hands up with jazz. I don't care. If you beat me, you beat me. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go at you. Do y'all Everybody remember, used to tell me I was crazy. Y'all remember that video, of Larry running over that goddamn car? Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit, man! That, I was in tears when I was. That shit was on the news. I said, what the fuck yeah. is going on with Larry? Hey, hey, Freddie, that's the one thing you would have to talk to New Orleans and learn how to defend that Larry Holmes double drop kick, bro, because he was dangerous. Are not built. Nothing like the ones in the Rock and Roll Express. <laughs> nah. Oh, no, man. I mean, I think, I think the heart level changed change as well. I mean, right. shit, these motherfuckers right. ain't got no heart at all. Got, there you go, Freddie. They ain't got no heart. You wait. I want to fight everybody and anybody, but these motherfuckers don't want to want to pick and choose who they fight. What the fuck? What they do? Pick and choose. What they do? You right? Well, yeah, man, give me the baddest motherfucker in the game so I can whoop his ass and forget about going over all these other motherfuckers. Just let me whoop the baddest motherfucker up there so I can say who I am. You know what I'm saying? That's going to show who you are. Yeah, you know, fuck all these other clowns. Give me the best motherfucker in the game. True story, man. True story, man. We were, right. we, we was trying to get uh Freddie an exhibition against Floyd, and, and you know, he told, he told he had the mishap. At least we could say this. Oh, Floyd, ain't, Floyd ain't going to Floyd ain't going to Floyd ain't going to come nowhere near me, that bitch ass nigga. <laughs> he ain't going to take nothing that guy. If he, if he got to work, he ain't going to take that fight. <laughs> he wants them little punk ass Oreo motherfuckers that he can knock around because them motherfuckers don't have no idea how to throw their hands. I don't even know why all the young motherfuckers even in boxing. You only had a couple of them that was anything. The majority of them get beat the fuck up. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you had, I, I, you had, um, you know, a few of them that were really good. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, you gotta respect the brother. You gotta respect them when they can fight. But if you can't fight, get out of the game, bro. This ain't the game for you, bro. Because you'd be going around, you'd be walking around talking to yourself about about time your, your career is over. So I don't want right. to nobody want to be in that position. That's right, You're right. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Let, let, let's let's paint a different uh, picture. Um, let's say Zab uh, uh, beats Kasuzu that night. What was the plan? What was the map for you guys? Had he had beaten uh, Kasuzu that night? Well, he would got he would have got a. Uh, we would have had a, like a like a, a twenty fight deal with the MGM. How many mm -hmm. fights? Twenty fights. Twenty. Shit. Twenty. And then yo, that's the wow. deal we made. And then he would have the deal they gave him a bet. Like a, 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 you know, a, a, I think a, uh, I think a red Bentley. Kazuzu got it though. He got Damn. It. He got Shit, it. fuck a uh, Bentley. He'd have been living in the house, big and big and motherfucker. Shit. We had, we had, but we had a pretty good deal with the MGM. Hmm. We, we, we beat Kazuzu. We, we had good, but you know. Listen, you can play you play your steps, but God he directs. That's mm -hmm. it. Right. Say, he, you want to say the father of above, he's the one that's gonna make the he's the last say he has to say everything. Father. Why he never fight him again? Because he ain't want it. I know for I, I know that. Oh, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. He's smart. He, he's smart. Because I, I think Zab would have got him. Zab would have got he him. Wanted. Wanted. No, we, you know, we, put the, we put the rematch closing right away. He, went, he shot the Australia. Got the hell out of here. <laughs> hell? That's fucked up. Get out of here. I was wondering why he booked up and changed everything up and moved. Yeah, he got yeah, he, he got out of here, boy. That was it. Damn, I think man. I fucking bad. Not too far from that. I think he retired. I think he retired then. Or He's he chilling. Because I, I, he, I was talking to him in the gym in Miami. When he came up there, he wouldn't even spar with me. I was like, come on, man. We just sparring. What the fuck? You know, ain't nobody. This ain't no fight. You just gonna spar? Was, nah, I was like. Oh, Co Costa, bitch, Costa was really careful. He played the business role yeah, after the Zab it, fight. He was very selective. I he was say a that. bitch ass nigga. He really was. <laughs> he, 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 he went down. He would not fight Zab. <laughs> I know he won't fight Zab again because he was he was getting out box the first round. They, they he barely touched him. Yeah, true story. The first round was easy. He almost knocked Costa out the first round. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was a coming out. I thought the fight was over, and I that's why I wasn't really paying attention. I had 
all of a sudden, when he got knocked down, my brother said, see, my brother yelled out. And I turned, what the fuck? And I see Zab went down. I'm like, fuck, man. He beating the shit out of this punk ass motherfucker. And I guess he just got caught. Yeah, he see, I thought he was going to make That's it too, fine. but. Zab was so skillful. Zab like the play with guy. He had his hands down, shit from side to side, smiling at him. I told Zab, I'm not going to work for him. You got to stay, stay busy. Anyway, you yeah. know, after, after 20 something years ago, so, you know. Yeah, I, well, I can't, I can't say nothing about that because that's how I used to do the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> I used to yeah. be throwing my hands down, playing with people, sticking my tongue out. Right. But yeah, but you can, when, you, when you got serious, you you wipe, you wipe the floor with a motherfucker. You got serious though. Yeah, I had to. Yo, yo Fred, Freddie, Freddie, <laughs> I didn't want, yeah. You was in there, you was in there playing with Felix Trinidad, and you was winning. But um, I already told yo well earlier, but reiterate what happened with you and uh Felix Trinidad. Oh, my corner drugged me. Wow. They drugged me during that fight. I was like, son of a bitch. That was one of the easiest fights yep. I ever had. I was laughing, playing with this motherfucker. Then they say, you know, he put some, he put this squab up my nose and I slapped this hand away because it burned a little bit. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Tell me he clearing the blood out of my nose. What blood? You see any blood on my face? And then when I got out there that round, all of a sudden I get dizzy. And then Trinidad runs up on me, and I just tried to cover up, but he caught me with a shot, a shot in, the, in the ribs, and I went down. And because everybody saw that something was wrong with me before Trinidad even ran up and hit me. You know what I'm saying? So Yo, well, I was like, you know what you do, Yoel? Well? If you go to YouTube, Yo. put in Freddie Pendleton versus Felix Trinidad and watch how the fight ends. You're going to be like, what the hell? I'm gonna watch that tonight. Watch that, that, tonight. that shit was check, crazy. And check, I, check I, this I, out. Thought, I thought he threw the fight when I was watching it mm -hmm. live. It was on Everybody said the same shit. I was like, what the fuck? I ain't get that. You know, I ain't gonna throw no fight, but nobody thought people understood that shit. They, I thought everybody's gonna realize that, you know, they fucked me over. You know, this what happened right after the fight. Two months after the fight, my trainer goes and buys a $350,000 house. See that shit? Wow. Wow. These mother this so, is a dirty sold ass me game, too. Dirty ass yeah. game. Man, I mean this bitch ass motherfucker bought a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. I told that motherfucker because we met his manager was my um was my I mean his um uncle was my manager. Mm -hmm. So we was in his office talking. And I told him I, I told him I said, Look, man, don't even say shit to me because take me everything I have not to jump over this fucking shit uh chair and kill your fucking ass. Cause you sold me out, you know you sold me out to to um train that and them motherfuckers and work with top rank to get me fucked over. That's it. And ain't nobody gonna be able to convince me you didn't do it. So me and his uncle was tight, cause he, his uncle was my manager. And I told him, I said, I said I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not working with him. And I know if I'm with you, I gotta work with him. So you got, you got, you know, you gotta let. Work, make up your mind. If if I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be with you, I'm not gonna have him in my corner ever again. So he let me go. I hear you, man. That that was some, that was some bullshit. Um, yeah, cause that you know how much money I made off of that win. Oh yeah, Gee, oh, yeah. ain't no way in the world they couldn't. You couldn't offer me enough money to throw that fight. Because if I beat him, the next fight I was gonna get about twenty five, thirty million dollars. You, 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 you be Trinidad, you definitely got paid. You got paid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? $25, 30 million dollars was my next fight for the rematch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then I knocked his ass out in the rematch and then moved on to the next punk ass motherfucker. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't remember what the guy's name was, but I was move. I was going to move up to 150, 154. Yeah, Terry Norris did yeah, yeah, Simon Brown. Oh, I would have beat that. I, I was already beating Simon up in the gym, so that wouldn't have been a fight. I beat Simon ass so bad in the gym, bust his nose, his lip, <laughs> and then everybody said, "I said I ain't gonna brag about it because me and Simon were friends." So right. I thought, I thought you know we was gonna get in the ring and work out, and you know it was gonna be the average workout. <clears throat> nah, you know that hook he had—he had a brutal hook. Yeah, he, he tried to hit me with that motherfucker. So I said, oh, this motherfucker going for the knockout. I said, let me show this bitch who he in there with. Man, I beat that motherfucker so bad. 
<laughs> Yo, Freddie, <laughs> Freddie, I'm showing the audience right now. Yeah. There's no reason why you went like that, man. I, You couldn't tell me when this happened. I saw this shit live. I said, man, that brother done threw this fight. Everybody yeah. thought that. Yep. And, he and I was you. like, ain't no way you want him to throw no fight. I'm going to fuck. That wasn't even a hard nobody. body shot, man. <clears throat> you were clean. Nah, the body drunk. shot was good. The body shot it, was good. It was? It was caught, yeah, it caught me clean. But you and, you, and I felt it. You take a you take a step back, okay, from the angle. Okay, well, you would know because I wasn't in the ring. You would know. Yeah, because when it, it hurt, I went down. But if it wasn't for the fact that I couldn't see him, but you got days. You take a step back. Hit. You got days for no reason. Was, he didn't was, land, he didn't land a punch. You just take a step yeah, but, back. But I'm what I'm be, saying is, yeah. it's more than I was more than days. I couldn't see him. My vision was all blurred up. I couldn't see shit. That's why I was wondering what the fuck happened. I saw back shaking my head backing up. And then he I see I see this shadow coming at me and then I, I try to cover up and he catches me right up under the elbow. I hate boxing. I hate boxing, I swear to God. Let me get to these super chats real quick. I don't hate boxing, I hate the motherfuckers that run it. <laughs> my brother woke in the super chat. He said he said too much. Press one, salute the champ side. My brother, phenomenal Mexican in the building, said all that trash talking on social media. Ryan did exactly. He ain't shit. Salute <laughs> to my brother D D Man Junior. He's in the strong house. Salute to my brother in conquest. He's in the strong house. And my brother won round with George Jackovich. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to George. He's the former HBO employee. He eats, sleeps, and shits boxing, no doubt. He said this is the first time I have done this. This show is fucking amazing. Bring this. Heat, bro, no doubt, man. Salute to you, George. Thank you. Much love and appreciation, man. Much love, man. I mean, everybody watch that, man. I for no reason, no reason. Uh, um, that body shot don't even land. You know what I'm saying? You for no reason, you ain't land a punch. You just you had your hands up, you take a step back, you wince, hit you in the body, and fight over. Can't no one tell me that the sport is fucking fair? Can't no one tell me that the sport is clean? It's not. So they can't tell you that. All you gotta do is look at the fights way back when it was it was dirty. Then <laughs> it's just worse now. Now that couldn't they gave a fuck the way they look, the way it looked when they did dirt. They wanted it look good. They try to clean it up. Here now they, they don't give a fuck about it. the audience. Nobody else. They just rob the man right in front of the audience. And who gives a fuck? Because yeah. most of the time. The audience back them up when they do the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right. when I when I got robbed over Relis, you got everybody cheering for this motherfucker, and they know he got his ass whooped. I, How you knock him off the ground five times and lose? That that's a, that's yeah. mathematically impossible. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was a twelve five. round fight. Yep. Five knockdowns put, and <clears> you lose the damn fight. That is. Really and I lost. Hard. I lost my title, and I was the champion. Never went down once. Man. And all these people was cheering that he won, and they know damn well he didn't. Yo, well, yeah. Other than the uh, the Selden match with with Zab, are there any other stories that you can tell us that involves any kind of corruption or cheating in the sport of boxing, like that you can remember? Anything that you was involved in, like directly that affected you? Or anybody that you know personally. I mean, yo, I tell you what, there's a hundred stories, bro. A hundred. I just don't. Freddie, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. But I'm not. I'm not. I, mean, I don't feel like going into it right now. But you know, you got you got, you got promoters, you got managers. So all John I got King stories. And Bob Aaron is both of them treacherous. They are the worst. Like both Ooh. of them. You know what I mean? They are I, shit. I know, I know both of them very well. We're very well. Both. So, Bob uh, Aram. So, l- l- let me ask you a question, uh, real quick. Oh, and salute to my brother Paul Carrick. He said UFC has a commission of boxing needs one. I agree. Um, and salute to you, Paul. Let me ask you a question. Devin had to sign a three fight deal. Was it a three fight deal with with Top Rank? I think, I think he did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. So this will be fight number two, and after fight number two, he has one more on the way out. I'm assuming. Yep. Um, is that concerning to you that he has to do business with? Uh, he literally has to dance with the devil to get some work done. Um, is that a little like concerning because he has to work with this fucking vampire, but named Bob Aaron? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I
the blood sucker well, listen, is? I give his father advice. I give Bill Haney a lot of advice. He's like keep me around. And, uh, I just try to do the right thing. But I say Bob Allen is not a good dude. Put that way. Mm. Mm. We we all know we 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 know about uh the no black fighter rule in top rank. We know about it because yep. a, 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 a an employee or a former employee of top rank. It's actually he he spoke about it, and I have the audio, and it's it's enraging. The fact that uh that was said, you know, what I'm saying they look, man. If you're not a foreigner over there, he's not going to promote you. That's why. Floyd Mayweather got the hell away from him, and we actually cringed that Devin had to sign with him to get some compliance because everybody was ducking Devin because that's how good this but, kid is. Well, Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford is left too. Crawford's oh, left. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I said a while ago um, that uh, the problem, the holdup with. Uh, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence was not really that these guys are ducking each other, but I think the problem is Bud Crawford's past dealings with that guy that I was speaking about, Daniel Kennehan. And this is the things that, see, American media, they don't even speak on it. You know why? Because Bob Aaron was in bed with Daniel Kennehan. We have all the proof in the world. We have pictures. Uh -huh. he, was in, he was in Dubai. He had pictures with him. And the next thing you know, they put all these sanctions on him. Uh, the WBC was in bed with this guy. Mauricio Suleiman was in bed with this guy. And then they pretty much told us, yo, kiss my ass. We're working with him. He's good for boxing. Next thing you know, America puts a, a, a $5 million bounty on his head, and they're stuck with their dicks in their hands like, oh, shit. Stop. Yeah, oh, shit. Stop acting like you know this guy was a filthy gangster. So now yep. he's, he's on the goddamn run. But Bob Arum said he's cooperating. Mauricio Suleiman said he made a mistake, like we've been saying. And um, everybody's on that no-fly list. Yo, well, there's about a 1,000 people on that no-fly list that can't fly because they're under investigation. Not that they were – you could say you didn't know you was transporting whatever this guy was pushing, drugs, guns, whatever. But the fact that this guy may have cut you a check, they have to investigate all of that money that flows through uh, uh, your pockets, your bank accounts. And what I said was – uh, I heard that Bud Crawford got a $20 million check from that man because oh, yeah? when Bud left top rank, he went to MTK, he flew down to Dubai to meet with this guy to see what kind of business he was talking. And I heard he gave him a $20 million check. So now imagine, now you see, here's the thing. Um, Bud and Errol, first Bud said, it's a 50-50 fight. I want 50% of everything. Errol said, no, I'm the draw. So it's 60 40. Then Bud said, No, fuck that. It's yeah, 60 40. Man. It's 60 40 my direction. And then Bud said, Fuck the fight. I don't need it. Right? Then he agreed to 35. So I said, Wait a minute. That's not negotiation. You agreed for lower than what you said you was worth. What the fuck happened? And the only thing I could think of was that that $20 million check that he thought yeah, he got, man. the $20 yeah. million check he thought he got. Right. Um, Maybe the U.S. government said, hold on, we need to investigate where you got that from. If you got it from Kennehan, right. that's not real right. money. All right? That's illegal money. We ain't playing these games. So maybe he don't have that $20 million that he thought he had, and now he's settling for, the, for, the less, for less of the money that he asked for to fight Errol. Now, I don't know past that what, what the fuck else is happening past that, but that, to me, is the holdup. All rolling around with this this notorious gangster that America doesn't even speak on, but don't fear, I speak on it. And salute to Trick Nolte, he had to go. Salute to you, my brother. Y'all make sure y'all hit up Trick Nolte's cash app. You know what I'm saying? Because when y'all see the guest on here, that's all I am. Yeah, yeah. But um, this, this, this no one speaks on Daniel Kenhan, and this is why I brought up Bob Aaron, because Bob Aaron was in he was in a partnership with Daniel Kenhan, and now he's cooperating. So you got Bud, you got Bob Arum, and that's why it really bothered me that Devin had to do business with this fool, Bob Arum, in order to get some kind of compliance. So I was just reading the chat right here. Um, I think that um, uh, my brother Jamal said Loma might be the third fight on the way out of top rank. So I don't know. 
I, I I want him to stick it to Loma. Loma made him wait. He makes he should make this is just my opinion. Loma made him wait. Devin should make Loma wait because he can go anywhere and do anything. He's undisputed champion. So that that's the story with uh with, with Bob. Can't stand right. that guy. He, he's the devil. But um you yeah. heard, you heard yeah. it here first. <laughs> you heard it yeah, here I know first. That, yeah. Yeah, I know what he is. You come on, Bob Am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Bob Am is a slimy piece of shit. He he plays the game and he gonna roll you for what he can get you for. And if it's gonna come down to money now, he can backdoor the money anytime. Right, they right. do that a lot. Uh -huh. Man. They do that a lot. You know what I'm saying? And um, like they then they claim like and then they play the game where they claim they don't have they don't they don't have that much money to pay. You. That's they right. got whatever they need to pay you. Whatever you ask for, they got it. Hey, if you, you fall for it, there, that's on you. Hey, you're well. You know we spoke about Vegas, right? Um, right. Bob Arum also was working with Daniel Kennehan, who co-promoted. Um, well, he had a, he had his hand. Tyson Fury is his guy, right? right? Tyson Fury is his guy, <laughs> and we find out later that um, Bob Arum paid over $8 million in consulting fees to Daniel Kennehan and MTK Global. Now, what the fuck does this dude, Daniel Kennehan, know about boxing that Aram doesn't know already? Now, you mentioned uh, the, the the altered gloves, and we're talking about the third fight and how this guy Fury's getting injections that we don't know about and what the fuck was the injections about. Right. That was the eight million, in my opinion, that was the eight million dollars in consulting fees. He was paying everybody in Vegas to look the other way while Tyson Fury did whatever the fuck he wanted to do. That's what that was. All of this shit is rolling downhill, but it's what's in darkness so always come to light. Right. You That's know right. what I'm saying? So I mean, it might not happen when we want it to happen, but it'll come out. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the, the brother Deontay got robbed three times. Three times, you know. Um, the draw in the first fight. That was bullshit. I had Deontay winning that fight. Two mm -hmm. knockdowns. Yeah, I did too. Two knockdowns. And even if you split the rounds, six and six, Deontay had two knockdowns. So who wins the fucking fight, for fuck's sake? Right. The rematch, I didn't realize the equipment was fucked up until after the fight. I'm seeing film and the, the, the glove is all floppy. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Deontay got a dent in his face. You know what I'm saying? I had Nicholas Asbury, who sparred with... um. Uh, Tyson Fury in his camp. He said, "Yo, he took pattern out the gloves. I turned the glove upside down. A fucking egg weight falls out that fucker." Mm -hmm. They never called him a liar or tried to sue him for defamation. They apologized to him, and they told him we were just trying to give our guy confidence because he's been out the mm -hmm. ring so long. I said, well, "Why is anyone not?" But 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 we're making it up. We're making it up. You understand? This is how they treat black fight fans, man. This is what they do to us. Right? Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it's bullshit. I think it should have been a bigger deal what happened with Cletus Selton and Zab. That was not on ESPN. The fact that he was in surgery was, if I remember correctly, that he was injured, but this guy popped dirty, and he should have been thrown out the fucking sport, the Hebrew hammer. Yep. yep. Man, and then you wonder why some of these dudes want to handle shit on the street level, man. This is ridiculous. But you know why they don't give a fuck about the black side of it? Because... The majority of people that are showing up at these fights paying these big money to watch these fights are white folks. So they're going to cater to them. And when they feel, because they felt like, if the one, one, one guy said flat out that, you know what I'm saying, we tired of seeing niggas win championships. Well, that, that's flat out said it. That, that's, they, that's, they, people tired of seeing niggas win championships. That's apparently, um, the, the, these, listen, the black dollar has been undermined. And the 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 they want to lie and say that Mexicans only support Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans support the Puerto Ricans and they want to make it so that we don't uh uh they want to put it out that we don't support our own fighters and that's just mm -hmm. not true. Yeah, and they you know want to break they want that's why they're breaking it down the race because that's the easy way to do it. Floyd Mayweather, his fan base wasn't only other ethnicities, it was a lot of it black was, people. Everybody it was believe. The, Right. So with, with, with us, we support Devin. Yo, listen, we support Devin Haney heavy. We support Deontay Wilder heavy. We support a lot. We support the black fighter heavy. Not to say that we hate of course, everybody of course, else. Of course, this thing was to do. 
Yo, oh, Shakur, yeah, we support him. Even though he's running around talking mm-hmm. about he's Puerto Rican, it's whatever. We support him. Who's that? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> he did. He's, he's running around. Shakur, he's running the ring with a with a Puerto Rican flag. Yo, man, hey, man, okay, whatever. Shakur, what is he crazy? No, hey, listen, look, look. I'm just gonna touch on that for a second. I'm gonna get off. <laughs> he, his dad, I think, his dad was Puerto Rican, and he mm-hmm. promised him that he'd be the first Puerto Rican. I don't know something undisputed. Look, yeah, I mean it'd be nice, but they, they, um, the Puerto Ricans don't give a fuck. Hey, man, they don't listen. Let that kid let let him shine. He's at one thirty five now. You know, there's a lot of one thirty five is a stacked division. I think the fight to make down the road. Granted, if 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 Tank, you know, if Tank is really retired, I think he's full of shit. He ain't retired. Yeah, I do. Too. I, I, I think the fight to make. Down the road is Shakur and Devin. That is going to be a brilliant fight. Well, Shakur and Devin, Shakur and Devin, or, or Shakur, I mean, or, or, or Tank and, and, and Devin. And Devin, the, the, man, they got a fight. I, I, I got. I, 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 I can't wait that. I'm going. I got to go to that. I don't know about um, Shakur and Devin. I think I think Devin's too much for him. Yeah, but I, I don't think they, they don't need to fight right now. We got Tank there. Yeah, you're right about that. Lomo, we got Lomo there. Knock them dudes off. I mean, yeah, sit around and make all the money you can make. Then, right. as, the last, as the last resort, then you go to that part. Right, that's how you do it. Yeah, you know, man, in a, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, man, in a perfect world, man. I mean, let's his brother say Jizzle nine ten. He says, "I tell people to this day, if you say Fury won the first fight, it's fair to say Sugar Ray Leonard beat Tommy Hearns in every <laughs> rematch in eighty <laughs> nine." <laughs> man. People don't know what they don't know, man. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man. I could talk to you brothers for hours, man. I'm gonna bring this one to a close. Yo, 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 yo well, I got your yeah. number. Lock me in. I'm definitely gonna have you back. You know, um, uh, I'll bring you back before the 15th if you don't fly out there to Australia. Right. You know, right. I, I really would like to see you out there, man. Cause oh, I didn't know that y'all was that close. I had no idea. <laughs> Now, who's that close? Who, who? I didn't know that you was close to, to Bill like that. I didn't know. Look, I ran, yeah, I ran Bill's whole gym. Uh, I, I lived in Las Vegas. I lived, I lived in Vegas for three years. When I was down there, Bill actually, I was training this. I was training Devin. Devin was eight, nine years old. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm training him, taking him to the we, 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 we beat everybody. Everybody. You know, but Bill asked me to find him. He found him, I found him a gym in Vegas. <laughs> Uh-huh. We made it there. It's called the Hit Factory. The Hit Factory. Mm-hmm. Everybody came there. Floyd, Floyd didn't have his gym like that. He had it. Them, Big Floyd, Little Floyd, uh, uh, Roy Jones. So, I mean, you name it. It was all in the gym. Everybody. But I still had Devin. I had Devin up until like 13, 14 years old when I left Vegas. Then right. Big Floyd, he took him over. You know? Wow. Devin is very, and, Devin and- very well schooled. He schooled real good. I was I was elated when they stopped Bill when they when they told us they were stopping Bill and they said yo Yoel Judas going I was like oh hey. I was like oh wow until so we stopping Bill yo, no, no. And they said yo Yoel Judas yo, yo, going. Yo, 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 yo. Oh. he's around me and Zap you know he's seeing saying about how to do it and you know he you know he he's put up the pieces that's all now he got a son his son the champion and uh, that's what it's gonna be I don't know if I'm going back to for this fight for Australia because I got it's on my personal behalf. I got certain things I'm gonna take care of. But going forward, I I would be with everybody. So, yeah. Definitely. My, my my brother George just slid into the building. George, what's going on, George? Can you hear me? George, you there? George, can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm here. I'm here. Go on to cook for a second, brother. Go ahead. Look uh th- this show this show is incredible because you have real you have real people in boxing telling real stories and this is what the sport needs definitely man definitely definitely george let let them know who you are exactly though if, if freddie and in, in, in uh yo i don't already know let them know who you are your background uh i was a producer for hbo sports for about 15 years but before that, I followed the sport. I was a fan of the sport. I've loved the sport. I grew up in Rawley, New Jersey, and there was a fighter named James Scott who was a light heavyweight. Um, I don't know if anyone knows the history of James Scott, but 
Uh, I I love the sport for my whole life and shows like you this. James Scott? James Scott? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From Warway State Prison. Yes, sir. I grew up two miles from the prison. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, so so shows like this with real people in boxing talking about the real aspects of the sport. This is everything to me. Yeah, th this is what it's all about, man. And you know, Freddie's a real dude. Yoel's a real dude, man. I heard yo well, I heard so many stories. I, I mean, I'm not told my internet stories, yo well. I heard I heard about shit about you in the street. Like someone will tell me a story, but like, yeah, that was yo well. I said, Yo well, who? They said, Yo well, Judah. I say, like, wait a minute, what? Yo, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, coming from coming from my life when I grew up in Brooklyn, I came up in the era of the gangs. I mean, I mean, I said the gangs, the gangs, the tomahawk, Jolly Stop. Saigon, the black people, black spades, black, black spades. So, I was dealing, with, I was in that phase. I was running hard, bro. I, was running, I got a, I got a mad fight. I can, I can say most of the guys I would I beat them. You know what I'm saying? And then, then I took over the construction of, of the coalition part. I don't, I don't know if you know about coalitions and construction, but I ran the biggest coalition in New York, fight back. Mm. And it was a, I didn't, yo, I didn't really have to finish having you guys here five, six in the morning. After I tell you the story. All my life, my life is crazy, bro. Crazy, so I gotta tell you. One day, you know, we, I you know, hope to come back and we can talk more. But I got a lot of stuff going on. Oh hell yeah, man! I mean, I'm glad that you manifested all of that in the boxing ring and kickboxing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, you, you, you brought the boys in there, and um, uh, you got a niece that uh, it was, it was interesting. I was at work one day, and I'm damn, I forget her name, but everybody calls her Miss Brooklyn. But I forgot. Sharice. 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 That's her. <laughs> I met her. I met her. And she said, you know, Zab. No, what happened was she had on Zab's shirt. And I said, what you, I said, what you know about that shirt? She said, that's my cousin. I said, you lying. She said, I'm dead ass. And that's who I bought the tickets from to go to Atlantic City. Sharice. I ain't, see, I ain't speak to her in about, damn, it's been about a decade. Damn. She's still around. She's still around. She's crazy. <laughs> that's her that's her that's crazy man yeah man um but she was one telling me some stories i was like sheesh yeah she's crazy man. man i had a lot i had a lot of entanglements in the streets i think i think freddie maybe so so but i'm saying mine was a little more different because i, I took over a lot of organizations i took them over you know what i mean and uh i'm calling shots here calling shots there it was just I mean, I, like I said, I can tell you some stories, man, that, I mean, I don't even want to talk about right now. I, I thank God every day that I'm still living and I'm breathing. And then, you know, I got, and I got, main thing, I got my health. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's what, I thank God for that every day. Yes. The money is up, the money is good, but the money will come. Right. You got to have your health together. Keep your mental state and your physical. And you Definitely. Go along with it. Definitely. I got to. You definitely worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Wait well, I a mean, real quick. Real quick. You hear, you hear what I did? Uh, in 21, right? Everybody heard I went to Mexico and I took a pro fight. What would you say? Say it one more time. I went to, in, in April of 2021, I went to uh, Mexico. Uh -huh. We got Cancun. Uh, anyway, I, I took a real pro fight. And everybody thought I was crazy at my age. And the guy, the Mexican down there that knew me, he tells me, he called me all kind of fucking names. The Chihuahua, and you got no fucking balls, and you scared. And I'm like, yo, hold up. These people don't even know me. But he followed me around for like 15, 20 minutes. And I said, yo, how much is it to fight this dude? You know what I mean? And he said, yo, he's looking, he's looking for 24 pesos, which is about $600, which was, he's good for like three months with that kind of money. So I told my man, give it to him. And then we fight the next day. Everybody like, no, no, dude, no, you don't fight, no not fight. You know, and uh, I said, it's all anyway. I went back to the, my dressing room, my hotel. I trained, I, I had my guys going to fight. I had to pad me, I pad me, pad my little movement. See, my, my thing, my defense, my defense is crazy. Like, I don't get hit with the right hand. Everybody thought that would be hard to hit me. But anyway, the fight grew the first bout up Saturday. And yo, that wrong. Just like I thought, he came right at me, he came right at me swinging crazy. A lot of shots, I slipped, slipped, catch, short, hit. I'm touching him to the body, hooks on the chin. And he caught me with a hook right hand. Really fucked me. He really hit me. He knocked the shit out of me. Oh my God. <laughs> I kind of, I, I kind of tied him up, got loose. And then about, about four or five or six punches. I got silent ones in and I spun off. And I, he came at me and I busted with the jab. Round getting ready to end. So anyway, 
I think I hit with three jabs, right hand and, and, and right over. I go to the corner, and, and we get ready to say seconds out, get ready to start round two. I see the referee waving the fight off. I'm like, what the fuck are you waving the fight off? Well, some kind of way, I had split this guy's tongue, his tongue inside his mouthpiece. Ooh. I don't know if the mouthpiece ripped it up, but I, hit, I know when I hit him, he made a little noise. Like, oh. and, and anyways, there's no much blood dishing out his mouth. They, they stopped the fight. Oh. And this yeah, was so, this this was last wow. year. This this was twenty twenty one. Last year, April twenty twenty one, I fought. The, I went to the real fight. Zab, Daniel, was all my son so was, They begged me. They begged me not to fight. I said, Nah, man. I mean, you know, F- Freddie, you got Freddie. When you know it, you know it. Right or wrong? <laughs> man, <laughs> what is that? Hey, Freddie, my thing is here. If you can fight, you can fight. Whether you, whether you nine, fifteen years old. Or you 55 years old, you can fight, you can fight. You can fight. That's real. It's just being in shape. It's just being in shape. And I was and I wasn't in shape. I was in shape. So anyway, they stopped the fight the first round, and that was it. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I gotta I definitely gotta um I wanna I wanna come I wanna come to your gym and get a workout in, Joel. Come on. I definitely on, gotta man. do that. Definitely gotta do that, man. I got, you know, I exercise daily. You come through. You gonna like it. You gonna like it. You gonna, anybody come? Anybody come to, to New York? Call me. Hit my gym. Yes, hit the gym. You come to New York. Come see me. Definitely. Now, yeah, if, definitely. If, if you're not in, if you're not in Australia on the 15th, are you gonna come to the Barclays? Uh, I probably will. Yeah, I probably be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll definitely. Be there, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna hit you up. Definitely gonna hit you up. Cause hey, Freddie, I wanna say this to Freddie. Freddie, Dude. you are a legend. To a lot of guys, I don't know if you know it or not, because you pulled off some fantastic stuff. And I always, I always tell them, yeah, that Freddy, that, that that dude right there is ungodly. I just tell him, yo, you always came in shape. You had that big right hand, and every time you touch somebody, you solid they hit the floor. I just watch, I just watch you all the time. You know, yeah. you, never, you never ran, you never ran from nobody, you never touched nobody that I know of. And they called you out, you stepped up to the plate. That's why I mean, it's my mother. I'm gonna fight any and everybody, even heavier than me. <laughs> so, yo, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about heavy. I know guys, your weight. Mm-hmm. It was your weight. I see you. Guys, your weight were easy, but guys, I I wanted to move up like three or four different weight classes. I moved up in uh at the junior welterweight. I wanted to go to welterweight in junior middleweight, but I never got a chance to. Right, right, right. I, no, Man. But I'm satisfied with what I did. Freddie, bro, you a hell of a fight. Well, I can say. Appreciate that. Much respect. Much respect for you. Freddie, 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 Freddie had uh, great timing, man. Like all the fights I watched Freddie in, you had a. It was like you had, you would anticipate that jab and just take like a half step back and throw the right hand over the top. Yeah, yeah. but you know, you know they said, you know they said that punch was was Floyd Mayweather's punch. No. I was like, I've been doing that for years. How become Floyd Mayweather's punch? It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? They named uh, stuff in the game and saying that Floyd invented it. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I understand everybody likes Floyd. Floyd's a good fighter and this guy another. But come on, man. You know where I got that thing from? To Ray Robinson. Yeah. They've been doing that shit for years in the game. You're right. You're right. You're right. You got it. You got to have impeccable timing. You have to have a really high IQ to pull that off. Because if you, if you try and do it and you don't pull it off, you can get you can get fucked up real bad, man. You gonna get clipped. Yeah. Right. I, I tried to do a, 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 I did a horrible James Tony impression years ago, <laughs> trying to work the Philly show. And I, I walked back to the corner and the dude working the corner was looking up at the side of my head. I said, what's wrong? He said, you got like three speed knots on the tone of your fucking head. He said, stop doing that shit. It's not working. I said, okay. I said, no wonder I'm seeing stars and shit. I said, I'm getting hit. What the fuck? It was all, it was all wrong. I said, all right, that's the end of that shit. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Tony had, had some, some, I mean, he was a really good fighter. You know what I'm saying? He got away with a lot of shit. He had some slick moves. You know what I'm saying? I still look through his shit too, so I don't tell nobody. Don't tell, don't let him know. You know what I'm saying? But I stole some shit out of him, so yeah. I mean, I don't stole, I don't stole some moves from every fighter out there. Yeah, James, James was something else. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>
Damn, yeah. something else, man. Damn, yeah, something you else. need to stop. Oh, yo, yeah. well. Yeah. Had Riddick fought Lennox Lewis, who do you have winning that fight? Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis. Why do you think Lennox Lewis won the gold? Won the gold mm. Won the silver? Because mm -hmm. Bo would not fight Lennox in, in the Olympic, Olympic, Olympic trials. Yeah, Bo that's won. truth. And he didn't fight him. He didn't fight him. He would come out. He would, listen, man, I'm playing first half. So he, he, he would not come out to the dressing room to fight Lennox. Lennox would <laughs> Bo would fight him. <laughs> Lennox wanted all the smoke, man. Lennox wanted yeah. all the smoke, man. My God. Oh, so when, when he got Mike, when he got when Lennox got Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was already going downhill. Plus, Mike was doing Mike was into all that shit. I was, I was in the dressing room with Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike was going through all that shit. Plus, Shelly Finkel was feeding him drugs to keep him close, to keep him calm and all. They gave, they gave it to him right before the fight. And he still went great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, listen, man. I, I mean, I'm telling you what I, I was there. I'm in the dressing room. Like, what the fuck? You said, Mike, Mike, you, you said, Mike, Shelly, you said, Shelly Finkel? Shelly Finkel, yes. Yeah, 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 Mike. That's another one I, mm. I ain't talk about, but I don't want to go into it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't wait till your book come out. Ooh, I have a book on that shit. You need to do a book on that shit, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I can really tell you. Is the out for boxing? Who was the great promoters? Who was the quick promoters? Who was the good fight? I know, but I've been around, I've been doing this over 60 years. I know this shit like the back of my hand, mm. you know. But well, during my day, I can't, I don't know who was good when we were doing my day. We had one promoter that was okay, but all of them was pretty much pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, Freddie, was you signed? Freddie, was you ever signed? Do you ever sign a dog yeah, what's wrong with that okay. big head motherfucker? <laughs> All right, so, you, so you know, so you know the deal, bro. You know the deal. Yeah, and them motherfuckers do we ever do his fucking hair? Goddamn! Right. <laughs> I mean, get his style up just once. Got this shit reaching for the sky, man. What the fuck? <laughs> I never knew why he did it, and everybody said that he, he it was his style. I was like, that ain't called style, man. But I don't know what that's called, but it ain't style. Nah. Um, have you ever had any dealings with Al Heyman? Have you ever spoken to him or heard his voice? I spoke to him, but we never really got the hit up because I when um I was I was I quit. You know what I'm saying? Neighbor or something. I, I should go talk to him about about fighting. And I said, man, please, I'm just, I'm at the point where I was so exhausted with dealing with all the BS, I just quit. What about you? You've well? been getting robbed too much. Too many robberies, too many stealing fights from me, mm -hmm. and giving these young boys wins, you know what I'm saying, over me when I when I be, clearly beat the hell out of them. I just got tired. I think it was the Rellis fight that really. It, it just really sucked the energy. It it sucked the, the, Urella, yeah. the Rellis fight sucked the energy out of you. Yeah, because I know, I know that my ground too many times. I'm like, how the fuck did he get the decision? And then I filed a protest, and these motherfuckers backed him up. Tell me that, that no, no, we, the fight, he won the fight. How could he win that fight when I'm not going to win the fight? Yeah, you talking about, talk about Rafael Ruiz, mm. right? Yeah, I'm going to let him up with him four times. How could he win? It's impossible. No, but it was Baby and him and his brother. What was his brother's name? He was, he was, yeah, I know. Right, his brother. It was Baby mm. and both of them. So at the time, it was coming up. It was undefeated. It was Mexican. They were trying to keep them undefeated. You probably did whip that ass. Yeah. Not, you know, Man, I ain't just whipped that ass. I put that motherfucker down four times. Had him going down, I'm going to have him down, going down again in the last round, and they still gave it to him. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Yo, well, you ever had any dealings with Al Heyman? No, we no, not really. We, we, we talked we talk a couple of times, but no, not really. I, I didn't want to I didn't want to really deal with him. Uh, I mean, like, we get too close. To him. So he, he, was, he had a lot of fighters, and everything he was doing, I was just like, nah, I'm just going to chill. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I talked to him. I talked to Eddie Hearns. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I know, I, I know more, bro. I know more. You know what I'm saying, you know, uh, we just say, yo, promoters, promoters are gonna try to do the best so they can make that money. You know what they gonna do? You know, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna pump you up, put you out there, and then they, they bring somebody in that you know you can't be. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so, trying to get into. It. I'm trying to get into it. Promoting fighters because I want to see. I want to get in there and try to do the right thing by the fighter. You know what I'm saying? 
everything the right way, the right money. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? If, they, if, I, can, if I can't make it big, nobody can. Because I'm going to do what's supposed to be done. I'm going right. to pay the fighter what he's supposed to get. You know what I'm saying? He's going to get time with the fight. Ain't going to be no last minute bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do everything the right way. So, you know, they probably going to fight against me. They're probably going to go after me and everything. But fuck them. Let them come with it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure they're going to keep it the same way. Because I'm like, it's ridiculous because every sport is getting raggedy and raggedy every year. So when is somebody going to change it and try to make it better? Mm. This, this, yeah, the boxing needs needs to be overseen by one sanctioning body. There's too many, mm -hmm. too many belts. There's uh, too much politics and bullshit. So this old regime got to get the fuck out of here. But my, my concern is yeah. when, the, when the old regime leave, leaves, there's always somebody waiting in the wings to, to continue the, 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 the fuckery. You may hold this little man, man, please. You got, he, he got to go. He is terrible. WBC King, the King, WBC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was with all these promoters and they, man, they make huge money, bro. Huge money. Yeah, I already, I already put uh, Marisa Suleiman on blast. Everybody saw it. And then the motherfuckers don't like me for it. And here's my response fuck y'all. Don't, well, don't, don't, don't get mad because he couldn't answer no goddamn <laughs> questions properly. I did the same shit to Sugar Hill. Don't get mad because he, he didn't have no goddamn defense for what I was saying. The shit that's going on in sports, period, man, yo, ain't nobody got no good answer to that shit. Hey, yo, listen, let me tell you something. When I, when I was fighting, I, I used to fight out of Clark. Mm -hmm. I had to leave Brooklyn. Me and Mark, and we go to Clark. We'd be in Detroit for like a month, maybe two months. I, I, was, I was really, I had a Clark, I was a Clark fighter. I had the pad, I had the trunk, I had everything. And the manual through it, I was working with a manual. And yo, Sugar Hill never, ever was there. Never. He never, he, nobody seen him. Like, no, he pops up after Manuel died. Then he came on other thing, you know. But I heard Manuel didn't want to. Manuel was some. Manuel really want to deal with him. There was some going. On. I ain't angry, but it was it wasn't good terms though. But he, that's why he came after Manuel died. And he changed his last name to Stewart because it wasn't Stewart. He changed to Stewart, and now he got the big fight with Tyson Fury. All he got the big fights. So wait a minute, wait a minute. He wasn't in the gym putting in work and learning from the great Emmanuel. No, he, no. No, Sugar Hill was there. I was there five, six years in Crunk. I fought Jimmy Paul, Hill McKenty, Steve McCorry, Mike McCurry, all of us. We all, I mean, it was a gang of us. Yo, I've never, ever seen Sugar Hill. Never. Nobody did. Nobody said it. Never. He came after a manual died. That's what happened. What the fuck? Yep. And he came saying that he was his nephew or some kind of kingdom to Emmanuel. I don't know, but Emmanuel, Emmanuel was there. You never seen Sugar Hill. Never. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yeah. So now, I, I, so so basically, it's safe to say he's pimping his uncle's name. I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you can call it what it is, but I mean, mm. he, 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 he just wasn't there. A lot, a lot of crumb fighters don't, you know, they, they believe that they, but I'm saying, just say the same thing. Focus time, you heard. I heard. I Mike McCullough, Julian Jackson, uh, 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 Steve McCoy, Mike McCullough. I don't know if Steve is going. But Milk McCoy, you know, uh, Jimmy Paul. Actually, was, was, was this kid around Sugar Hill? He's gonna go, no, he wasn't around. I'm telling you, wasn't around. <laughs> Holy shit. look at that! Look at that, Stormy. You hear this? I never thought I would have never thought. I thought the whole time they were training, he was just like there. No, no, he wasn't there. <laughs> no, he wasn't there. I, I could have said that a long time ago, but I, I'm just glad that it's coming from somebody more resourceful right. that Thank you can you. take take the word <laughs> for. So it, you know, I'm not you know, I'm not down to do I'm not down to I'm not talking about it. I'm that just telling I am. Him. No, you're just telling the fact. You know? You're just telling the fact because you know, you were here long enough to know. I said the same damn thing. You no, know, he wasn't he wasn't around. I, I can't I can't I can't take that guy. I can't. It's, it's, I ain't even going. I, I, I'll, maybe I'll talk to you behind the scenes, Joel. But there's a, there's a reason. There, there was a situation. Well, Joel, let me let me ask you this. You know, I always come up with a decent question, but I got this one for you. Since Sugar Hill wants to take on this persona of someone who's capable and who has been there, what do you think about 
him saying that he taught Tyson Fury how to knock people out, knockout punch. A fighter who wasn't getting knockouts, a fighter who was scoring, you know, TKO stoppages and stuff like that, but not KOs. What are your thoughts on that? You talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, man, again, again. I don't know what he taught. He, I don't know what he taught. Because oh, Emmanuel, he, he, he was, Tyson Fury was around when, back. he came in and took every now and then. He, uh, Tyson Fury did come around the clock. But it was no regular basis. You know what I mean? Tyson Fury came in for maybe a week or so. Like, you ain't seen him no more. Sugar Hill, you've never seen him. So I, I don't know if he, Sugar Hill, he trained him in the country. Well, I don't know. I just I just know that Emmanuel had him for Emmanuel did this thing with Sugar Hill. That's what Sugar Hill that's good chance. You know, all fun fighters got good chance. Well, well, I, well. I guess what I'm trying to get you to to say, and I should just come clean and and say this: punchers are typically born. You can't teach somebody to punch with more power. You can teach them to punch with better technique, and you can teach them how to turn shots over or, or put more snap on them or whatever. But you either have concussive power to get somebody out there with cleaning them up with a shot, or you don't. So a, a fighter, all of a sudden... But it's not necessarily true. You know that, right? What's that? It's not necessarily true. Okay, but well, can you help us with that? It's not necessarily true. Help us with it. Because help a lot of fighters named these aren't taught how to turn their body with the... turn their right hand through the body with the punch to follow through that's why they don't have power because a lot of trainers don't know how to teach that. They don't know how to teach how to throw that hand. They don't know how to teach how to turn that left hook over. They work with this new way bullshit that Floyd Mayweather does with all those fluttering combination of punches, and that shit don't work. You ain't gonna with that bullshit. You're right, you're right. Well, here's the deal. But see, uh, let, let me counter with that. That yeah, I believe, yeah. you know, that was Freddie just talking, right? Yeah. I, I've always believed that, Freddie, because that's a, that comes down to coaching, proper technique, and things of that nature. Getting your body behind the shots, putting your hip into it, and waist and everything, turning, twitching, you know. But a guy who's not knocking people out all of a sudden is knocking people out. I, I I don't know that, you know, that, that I believe in the fact that some guru has come down and done something that nobody else could do. You know how easy it is? You know how easy it is to teach how the power plant? Right. Now, let me, now let, let, me, let me add to this. Let me add to what, to what uh, Stormy's saying. Mm -hmm. Between the first fight between Deontay Wilder and Fury and the second and third, Fury didn't do anything different except alter his equipment. I didn't see well, him, I, I don't see him doing anything different. There was nothing different in there except altered equipment. And we seen that. You well saw that. There was altered equipment. In the third fight, there was bullshit behind the scenes. And you know, who knows what, what Deontay's punch resistance is, but this newfound power that Fury has, he said he taught Tyson how to turn his punches. Yeah, I, didn't, right. I didn't see that. I seen the same guy. I did too. Exactly. Right. So that was what happened. Right. So Sugar Hill. So Sugar Hill. So Sugar Hill lied. Sugar Hill lied. He lied. He said I taught him how to turn punches. When I asked the motherfucker, I asked that mother. No, I did. I asked the motherfucker, where are the gloves? He told me they're in his fucking house. I want to see the gloves. Because the gloves that Fury had on would look deflated and missing padding. Just right. like Nicholas Asbury said when he got dinged up the second day in sparring and then he had a fucking egg weight in the goddamn gloves. And he's on the videos on YouTube where he has a video and he says, Look at these gloves. This is look. There's no padding in these fucking gloves. So, so Sugar Hill's a fucking liar, 
And now we have the brother Yoel saying he wasn't even in the fucking gym when Stewart was there. So here we have another we we, we have another pipe bomb. Well, you well, you, you can talk to any crunk fighter, crunk fighter. I said, was you was, was, was a sugar hill in the gym? They don't tell you no. Nope. He didn't t- he didn't teach Tyson Fury how to turn punches. And I understand exactly what Freddie's saying, but I didn't see any changes in Fury's style. I saw the same fucking guy. Only thing now he's busting the same thing. He's he's he's, he's breaking it, uh cheekbones and putting dents in people's head. Drew. Yeah. So one thing I noticed, I know you said there was no change in style, but what I saw was a Tyson Fury that was a lot more aggressive in that second fight, but yes. doesn't that coincide with the fact that his gloves were different? He was much more aggressive in the second fight than he was in the first fight. I mean, is that because the gloves were different? Yeah, he 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 knew he had a lot of things in his look. If you're hurting the guy every time you hit him. You you're gonna have less resistance from him, so you can punch more. Of course, he had fucked up equipment that gave him a shield of invincibility. And I don't give a fuck when any of you said Deontay got drugged. And he and was don't... he was going in there against a Deontay who was depleted, a guy who wasn't sharp, a guy who wasn't like himself. And remember, Nicholas Asbury told the story of their explanation for him having the padding removing from the gloves and the egg weight and all of that was right. they were trying to build his confidence. And what you trained well, for, go ahead. Well, if you're building someone's confidence by cheating, I I kind of question who the person really is. And, and and at the end of the day, there are so many ways to look at this, but me, I'm clear. I don't have drugs in my system never have and my my focus is on point when i look at it and i say well if a man needed all of this type of assistance how fragile do he be yeah that someone else has to be depleted along with what you're doing to cheat get the hell out of here and we still haven't touched on the extra weight that he put on masking the fact that there may be something else in his system as well. Because you don't put on 30 pounds and get into the 11th round bouncing around There's like no way, bro. you There's no way. just fought two rounds or three rounds. And you've been hit upside the head by the guy who's the freaking hardest punching guy in the division there's no way somebody explain this and make sense to me because i've watched a pretty lot of boxing in my life and conquest is absolutely correct man that motherfucker flew to the uk and he prolonged his fight because he needed to cycle off his bullshit came back to vegas and got a mysterious injection in his goddamn elbow and he's bouncing around around 11 after getting dumped on his fucking head in the fourth round He's bouncing around in round 11 like it was round one. I was there. I said, what the fuck kind of cardio is he on? I need that shit. But you know what? I might not need that shit because I get random drug tested at my job. So and I don't not only that, that, Drew and, and, and George and Freddie and Yoel, he needed the assistance of the referee to get up off of the canvas inside of a count. Because the referee stalled out the count. He sends Deontay to one neutral corner, then stops him, sends him to another neutral corner, and then he stops him and sends him back to the original neutral corner, and then picks up the count from where he stopped. But not from the ring counter outside the ring. So the man is sitting on the canvas and literally had like, 15 to 20 seconds to get up, which he really didn't want to do. If you looked at his face, he had really nothing, but he was given the opportunity. Ridiculous, man. And this is what we deal with. This is what we deal with. That was a long-ass count, and that ref has a reputation. 
And and and, and they changed that ref the night I think I think four days before the fight. And I said, wait a minute, and I know that ref. And I said, that's the Agbeko Mares ref. What the fuck? How does he get this assignment? Well, yeah, man. We saw round four, the fight was over. The fight was over. What happened was D knocks him on the ground. He was going to the corner. This motherfucker got the six and sent him to another corner and then picked up at six. That motherfucking Fury was on the floor for like 12 seconds, man. <laughs> I was like, yo, what, what the fuck? And I'm, I'm in the arena screaming, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Man, I went, man, I was fucked around and got arrested. I felt like running downstairs, getting in the ring and spearing the goddamn ref. <laughs> They'd have been chanting Goldberg when I got done with that motherfucker. That guy, that particular referee, if you check his track record, he's got so much dirt on him, you would think he was the incredible mud man. <laughs> that guy's dirty. That guy's dirty. He's been getting a lot of work lately. And, and I ain't going to talk about the judges. Tim Cheatham? How the fuck are you going to have a judge named Cheatham? <laughs> the nigga's <laughs> last name is Cheatham. Get the fuck out of here, man. I fucking hate boxing. I love it, but I hate it. This sport don't love us. Bullshit. Hey, hey Drew. No, we don't. Here, here's, here's why I love boxing. Because of the two guys you have on the show. And with Freddie, you guys probably talked about this, but listen to the guys that he's fought. Hilmer Kenty, Jimmy Paul, Roger Mayweather, Frankie Randall, Livingston Bramble, Jorge Paez, Rafael Ruelas, Ricky Hatton, Vince Phillips, Felix Trinidad, Pernell Whitaker. If you don't want to learn from a guy who has fought legends throughout his career, this is the place you need to go. This is why I love shows like this, because you have – Real fighters that maybe the, the the casual fan doesn't know, but they should know because those names I just rattled off, those are those are, are fighters that are part of history. And Freddie is a part of history. Yoel is a part of history. That's why this show in particular is just so important to people who want to learn about boxing and know about what really goes on. So that's my little. And he's know, from an era. Exactly. Both of them are from an era when men competed. Exactly. Men are not competing today. Exactly. It's such a difference. It's almost like day and night, but there is so much respect for what these two gentlemen have done. Exactly. Over the eras of which their careers, you know, spanned. It, it, the, those names you just ran off, each and every one of them as an individual had a career exactly. of doing the same thing. Right. 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 This is why their paths were able to cross, because this is how you 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 performed in the sport. Sometimes it had nothing to do with your money. Sometimes it was just I want a piece of that guy. Right. You don't really get that at all today. Right. It's not a mistake that they don't Pendleton... put social media, but they won't they won't perform it. Right. It's not a mistake. Freddie Pendleton fought all those fighters I just named. It wasn't a mistake. He didn't just happen to have those fights. Talent got him those fights. That's right. That's right. And, and, and this is where we're at with this. That's why I only support a handful of fighters today. They have a throwback. Deontay Wilder has a throwback mentality. Uh, uh, um, Devin Haney has a throwback mentality. And they check this out. There's something that was revealed here that goes over people's heads big time. You had two guys who've been in there crossing over through Freddie's era that didn't want no parts of them that people revere today. Oscar De La Hoya yep. wanted no parts of Freddie. Yep. And Floyd didn't want no parts of Freddie. Tell us why, Fred. Because I'm not getting the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, oh, we got too many losses. What they got to do to defend them the world champion? <laughs> so now, because I'm a world champion, but you can't fight me because I got a few losses on my record. Yep. You know, you know what happened if Freddie went in there and styled on uh, Oscar De La Hoya? Oh, I'd eat after do it after go like a crimp. He fucked man, please. He had no he had no ball. 
Man. He would have been in those fish nets and pumps a lot sooner than we found <laughs> out. That he was in. Oh man, Stormy. <laughs> hey, I, I didn't tell a lot. No, you're now, telling the truth. I was going to be, I was going to be trying to kill him. I said, "Hey, bro, I ain't trying to beat you. I'm trying to kill your ass because I don't want you getting up. Period. Once you go down, the fight is over because you can't get up." Now I told him, if I got to put you down for good, I'm going to do it. And then what did he do? He went right back to Pac Ring and said he didn't want to fight. Oh, wow. Wow. Man, That's it, why it, they start ducking and, and oh, we're, we, we're working on it. We're going to set the fight up. It's all BS. And then I, I got tired of messing around with them like they wouldn't set the fight. Not left. Man, this you, know, you ain't gonna make the match fuck you. You ain't got nothing for me because the only fight that's worth real money was him. I had already beat Pyatt. Mm -hmm. Huh? I said, yeah, 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 you already beat him. Yeah, I beat shit out of that punk ass Oh, man. <laughs> yo, yo, well, man, um, if you're not in Australia, <laughs> please come by the Barclays, man. Um, so say we need to get up. I'm a, um I'm gonna try and hit up your gym before the fifteenth. That's that's uh, I'm gonna try and do yeah, that. Come through, come definitely, come man. Come Yo, well, you you should be in Australia. I mean, I mean, Devin, you you proved that Devin needs you. Huh? I said you should be in Australia. I think Devin Haney and his team they definitely need you. You're an asset to their team, and I think you should be there. Yeah. You know, you know, Devin Haney came. You know, Devin Haney came to Florida and was working with me up there for you know, about a week or so. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we worked, we worked, we moved around, I was working with him, and uh, I was showing him a little moves here and there, and then the Zed got pissed off with me because I came in, I was, I came in, when I got to the gym, I was 15 minutes late. So his father said, you know, I don't want my son praying with him, you know, my son will be the world champion. You know what I'm saying? You can't be coming in the gym late. So I went off on his dad and said, man, man, who the fuck you talking about? I said, nigga, I, you know, I'm 15 minutes fucking late. I wasn't an hour late. I work. You know what I'm saying? Because me, I don't like spending my money from boxing. So when I when I was fighting, I put money in the bank and I go to a job. So I, I got off my job late. Got to the gym 15 minutes late. He goes off talking about you know, he, his son's going to be a world champion. I understand that, but I got a couple other guys in here that have the chance to be a world champion as well. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I, I came late. You know what I'm saying? So what the fuck are you tripping about? You know, so we got into a big time. So I said, look, man, do the fuck you want. I ain't got time for this shit. When somebody well, blow up me for being 15 minutes late, that's ridiculous. Wow. You know, shit, shit happens. Well, you know, the well, fact of... He should understand that, but he's good. So, I mean, maybe we didn't beef after that. We had that one little disagreement. I walked. He said, you know, he, he didn't want me around. I walked. No big deal, no problem. Listen. Dude, that's the game. Yeah, I, I don't know. Bill, 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 Bill get real, I mean, he gets real funny when it comes to Devin. I've been around him, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying this. This kid. You know what I'm saying? But I just felt that he got he went a little too far screaming at me about being 15 minutes late. Well that 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 that, so that, that makes no that. sense. That makes no sense. As much as I respect Bill Haney, Bill Haney would be the first person to tell you he didn't have a, a, a past in boxing. He didn't know anything about boxing. He learned about boxing from guys like Roger Mayweather and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad and and you. So he didn't know anything about boxing until he met people like you. So for him to be like that, I just don't understand it. I mean, you know what I mean? I understand it to a point where when you start getting to a point where his son was starting to move up in the game. So that's but because, you, know, because that, you know what I'm saying? You get that attention and a lot of people don't know how to handle it. But that's because of people like you. And those other names I mentioned that he moved up. Yeah. Well, but, you know, what can you do? You know? Right, <laughs> right, 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 you right. I just walked away. Right, well, you know, right. things happen. And, uh, you know, time heals wounds. 
Um, yeah, I will. I mean, but when you willing, when you willing to be healed, I mean, yeah. we had disagreements. He wanted somebody else. I said that's fine. We went our separate ways. Like that's what men do. What you women supposed to do? Mm. We have a disagreement. You don't think we're gonna be able to work it out? We go in different directions. No fighting, no shooting. You know what I'm saying? Deal is done. Mm. It's all good, but you know, I, I'll I'll have um I have Bill on here soon enough, and you know, y'all could talk and y'all could uh patch things up. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know how people get. You know how people get, uh, you know, with their kids and things of that nature, you know. That's what I'm saying. You know, so, there's a lot of things going in today. So I didn't take no offense. Nah, it's all, it's all good. Um, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a bring this to a, to a, to a, uh, to a close because I, I, mm -hmm. I got a lot, I, you know, my wife looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? So, right. um, so uh, Stormy, let everyone know how they can find you real quick, my brother. Man, everybody can find me right here on YouTube. Uh, Stormy B Man is the channel. Also, we just launched this week the uh, the Patreon. So yes. Stormy B Man is my Patreon as well, and I'm officially on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, all right, I'm, Stormy. That's yeah, right. I'm on that's on right. Twitter. I ain't doing right. anything else but Twitter. But yeah, all I'm right. on all three of those platforms. So that's what's up. Get ready. They don't come for you. They don't come for you talking about me. You know how that shit go. <laughs> That's gonna be the funny. captain. The captain. George, yeah. George, let them know how they can find you. I, I'm on YouTube, just like Stormy. I'm on Twitter. One round with George. I just I, I give a, a my little take on what's going on in boxing, but it's things that that I want to talk about, not what the people want to talk about. It, it's a personal thing. Um, look, man, this show was was amazing tonight. You know, Freddie and and Yoel and Stormy and Drew. I mean, this this is real boxing talk for people who want to hear it and uh i'm 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 honored to be a part of it man we appreciate you george man your, your channel's moving you. and salute to this brother trick nolte man he's oh always, yes trick's always on the grind man trick is when amazing he hit me up, when he hit me up and said yo guess what i said what in caps he said yo man we got yoel judah coming on i yeah. almost put my phone across the gym i said get out of here you yeah. serious Cause yo yo well, we are like legit like fans of the sport, man. Like we've been, like I, like I have no experience in the amateurs, and I've been around, I've been fucking around in gyms all my life. You know what I'm saying? But I literally have a love for the sport, literally. And um, your name rings bells, like Freddie's names in the industry, they ring bells. We we have people on this platform that it's amazing. That that that, that the, the average casual be like, yo, who that? Exactly. You know what I'm saying. So the, 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 our platforms are just so important, man, because we pay homage and salute guys like you and Freddie, man, all day, every day, man. I really appreciate your time, man, for real, for real. Hello. What's happening? All right, so I'm going to bring this one to a close, man, and much love and appreciation, everybody. Uh, you well. I'm going to hit you up on the text to let you know it's me. Lock me in. Okay. No doubt. All right. Freddie, most definitely, I'll be in touch with you. You know, right. Freddie, me and you talk all day. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I'll holler at y'all soon. All right, later. All right, Thank later. you, bro. No doubt. Thank you. Right. Fellas, man, that was so dope, man. Oh, man. Um, hard, hardcore show. Uh, George, man, you got to come up and hang with us more often, man. Yeah, look, look, you know, Freddie Pendleton, you talk about, I, I, I don't mean to bash casuals, but if you look at his record, He's 47 wins, 26 losses, five draws. A casual wouldn't even look at that. Mm -hmm. But when you heard the names, if you look at his box record and you see the names he's fought, this guy's a part of boxing history, and he has an opinion on things. He's lived his entire life in the sport. To have a guy like that on this show is like it's more than it's worth more than gold. You know what I mean? I mean, again, a casual might see that record and say, this guy's got 26 losses. It goes much deeper than that. If you know the sport, you know it's much deeper than wins and losses. So That's right. this was a great, I mean, I loved every minute, every minute of this show. Much love and appreciation, man. Um, no doubt. Everyone subscribe to One Round with George. Y'all, If y'all ain't subscribed to George or especially Stormy, there's yes. something wrong with y'all. Um, tomorrow, I got a doctor's appointment. I just, my my damn... 
In the morning? In the morning. God damn uh, I got to be, well, be there. I got, I got a free morning. I got a free morning yeah. then. Um, I might go on earlier. I might. Shit. No, I got to. You know what? I got to call Junior. Because he starts at nine. I started not. No, he starts at eight. Maybe I'll go on at nine. And finish up like at 10. I might go on a little early, y'all. I might go on a little early. Because I don't want to miss a day, man. But salute to everybody in the Venmo, the Zelda Cash App, the Super Chat. Yeah, I'll make sure y'all hit up um Trick Nolte, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit him up, man, because he, he puts in great work, man. He sure does. So he, you already know what time it is. Bronx on deck. Jersey on deck. Chi-Town on deck. And we'll catch you on the rebound. Move! Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay.